There we go. Hello, everybody. I just realized I don't, I, I left in the middle of that. I like literally turned on my stream, did my live things and ran away to go get coffee. But I realized that maybe my music wasn't on the whole time or at all. Whoops. Also, hi. Thank you so much, River, for the Twitch Prime. I, I realized yesterday that we were at, it was a time of reflection. It's, um, Sorry, my brain's not working today. I'm my brain is mush. But I so you have to get fifteen sub points to get the next um like slot open for emotes. Also, I got I got see the hydrates. I will do it in a second. Um, and as of yesterday, we were at twelve sub points out of fifteen, and now we'll be at thirteen. So two more sub points, and I get another emote slot, which is great. Although I haven't started emotes, but we're about to. I promise. <sighs> My brain's not working today. Yeah, it, it's not. But, like, reptiles is something I could talk about in my sleep. So, it's going to be an interesting stream. So, I have, I got coffee. I also, since it's hydrated, I'll have my water. It's orange water. So, that's nice. Yeah, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. I know we usually, we play Subnautica and we talk about that stuff and then we go off all over the place. Um, but I just don't have I didn't play any Subnautica this week I didn't have the brain power and I didn't feel like I would be it would be a fun stream for me or other people hi bun so nice to see you good morning I hope you're having a good day um so I just decided that just in general I need a bit of a break uh so today we're just gonna just talk we're just gonna chat until I run out of things to say about reptiles We'll see how long that takes, or until my brain runs out of power, basically. And we'll see how that goes. Because I've been wanting to change, like, the format of it for a little bit anyways, because it wasn't super... I don't like the back and forth so much, so I was thinking about doing more, like, half the time Subnautica, half the time just actually chatting and going off on tangents and stuff like that. But for today, we're just going to try just going off on tangents. But the general thing we're going to talk about is reptiles because if you don't know i have you know a couple of reptiles i have six of them actually uh i'm coming to cl the close of my work day so i'm just gonna lurk for a bit while working no problem i appreciate you coming. i have a couple six is a couple for sure um and for anybody who's new here so i um have a degree in marine biology and neuroscience together so I know a couple things about <laughs> biology and I also worked um, for three summers at a reptile place. So reptiles are kind of my forte. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. And it's been a bit since I had to do like an actual reptile presentation, but I used to, I just realized, have my mic up on that the headset when I don't YouTube. because I'm talking into this one. Um, but I used to do reptile presentations for like children. Like I, if you've ever gone to see like to a zoo and they do like animal shows where they like bring out the animal and they talk about it and they let you like touch it like I did that but it was all snakes and like a couple turtles but mostly snakes um and we focused on native species so I know a lot of the, the species we have in Ontario specifically in Canada a little bit but overall I know some things about reptiles so so that's what we're gonna talk about I'm gonna have some coffee first. How are you guys doing today? Hope you're doing well. I got some, uh, th this, mu I like to have this much coffee and this much chocolate milk foam. I took the dog for a walk. That's nice. Yeah, I went for a walk this morning. It's pretty nice outside. Um, okay. Let's see here. Where's my browser? There's my browser. It's weird. Okay, actually, maybe it's because of, I don't have this in. I feel like there, I usually hear more sound when I'm doing this, but I guess it's because I'm used to playing a game. Honestly, that sounds like a good coffee ratio, right? Also, hi, Miz. Thank you for coming. No one I know actually likes coffee. They're always supplementing coffee. You're all crazy. Well, I like the taste of coffee, although I like it with like quite a bit of milk and sugar. But this is nice because... I just get random coffee cravings through the day sometimes, but if I have this much coffee, it means I can have like four and I've only had like one cup. Yeah, the smell of coffee, coffee is way better than the taste. Absolutely. 
quite a bit of milk and sugar. There's also I actually put maple syrup in this instead of sugar today. That means you don't like coffee. Yeah, but I like the the flavor of coffee. It's just too bitter. It's just too bitter. Rage. <laughs> Angry. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna get into reptiles. So maybe you know a thing about reptiles. Maybe you don't. And we're gonna I'm gonna start. I have the Wikipedia open already, and we're gonna start with that. Beans also play into the taste, though. I've had good quality coffee. It's just so expensive. Yeah, my um, boyfriend is super into really nice coffee, and it it can be really good, especially I like cold brew. Anyways, reptiles. <laughs> So, I'm excited to learn about reptiles. Me too, because I, I mean, I know things about reptiles, but I don't know that many. So basically reptiles, like it's, it's saying in here, so they're um, a ki kind of tetrapod animal, which just means they have four limbs. Coffee stream, please. <laughs> and so there's three, or sorry, four um, major, I think, order divisions. If you, if you don't know, the way stuff is classified um, in biology is like we have all these classifications that go down and the order that goes down is uh phylum kingdom class order family genus species and like the further down you get the more closely related things are someone passed me a bit they did somebody um sid i think on monday donated like two thousand, which was amazing so kind and pushed me past my threshold for payout which was so nice Anyways, but there's four um, major divisions. And then, so there's four major, like, divisions in terms of, like, the classification of them. And then, sort of in my brain, there's four major groups that we, like, really think about and talk about because the other ones are kind of small. Um, so there's turtles are one. Crocodilians are another one. Um, snakes and lizards. And you can see there, there's a thing called um, amphisbanians. I don't know a ton about them, but those are also involved in there so that's three and then there's two ataras which kind of look like lizards but i think there's like very very few species left and most of them in that little clade are all extinct now so yeah so but the divisions like when i was teaching this to kids the like the the groups we would talk about because you know being like well there's two ataras and there's other things oh Oh, thank you so much, River, for the 500 bits. Must be number one, they said. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, and it was pride flags. Pride flags everywhere. Tuatara sounds like a Pokemon. Well, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes they base Pokemon off of real animals. Wildly. <laughs> Every, you know, sometimes. Sometimes. Or maybe they based real animals off of Pokemon. We don't know. Anyway, so... Once again, the actual, um, like, in terms of phylogeny, which is, like, the how they classify it, the, the four major groups, again, are turtles, crocodilians, um, snakes, lizards, and amphisbanians are all together, and then there's tuataras. But people don't know what tuataras or amphisbanians are. I can never say that word properly. So when I'm teaching this to kids, I usually say... You know, the four groups are basically snakes, lizards, crocodilians, I skipped a finger, snakes, lizards, crocodilians, and turtles. Because um, those are really the ones that you as a normal person would have to, like, know about or worry about in your life. You're never really gonna meet a tuatar. I think they're only found in, like, God, like, New Zealand or something? I don't know. And, uh... Wads teaches reptiles not finger counting. If you want to learn about finger counting, go hit up a human error. He knows many a thing about counting fingers. Um, why do turtles get their own category? That's a good question. So we're actually going to, um, I believe in here it has the phylogeny. Uh, this one, I was looking at it earlier. So spiciness. So this is what, like, if you really get into it, all the classifications kind of get down to something that looks like this. Sometimes it's turned on its side, but this is like basically their family tree, right? And you can see, so there's tons and tons of groups. Um, so way over here, we have um, synapsids, which is mammals and their extinct relatives, because one of the big problems is, like, a lot of the stuff we classify is extinct because there's so much stuff that came before the stuff today. 
What about math profs? I'm sure they also know a thing or two about finger counting, but, you know, they, they teach counting too, I think. Yeah, so these are kind of the classifications, and a lot of these are um, extinct. Like, the, the whole uh, family or order is just gone, the whole group. Um, so this is, you can see um, we have amniotes here, which I don't remember what exactly that means, so don't hold me to that. But we have um, reptiles and we have synapsids, which are up here. And these are like distantly related. And then we get into more sort of like recent, um, like more recent like split offs. So you can see it's like down here we have the tuataras and the snakes and lizards. And these are closely related where it's like these two groups are related to this one, but less closely. And then you know, furthermore, these ones are related to these ones, but even less closely, and like so on and so forth. Um, so the reason they're broken up that way is because, um, like, genetically, a lot of the times it's done by genetics now, I think, how um, similar they are genetically is one of the factors in how they get rearranged in this, because this whole thing, the huge big family tree, it's... If you get into like every single species in the world and every single species there ever was that we know about, um, it gets huge and really, really complicated. And it's constantly being um, changed and stuff because this is all kind of just a theory. We don't actually know for sure if this is how it is. This is just kind of our best guess based on the data that we have. So again, like a lot of this stuff is all, these are all extinct groups, but you can see down here we have, um, again, the tuataras and the lizards and snakes, which are still alive, and they're very closely related. Snakes and lizards even more closely related to the point where I believe this is a family? No, sorry, it's an order. So they have their own order. I don't know if these all are orders, or if it gets down further than that. I think these are all orders. Kingdom, phylum, class, order. That's like four down. It's too many. It's a more advanced form of finger counting with the fingers are your brain. Yeah, so once again, tuataras, snakes and lizards, pretty closely related. And then like way over here, these are what? Just a clade, it's not gonna tell me. That's fine. So these are big groups, which is the, oh boy, Lepidosauromorphas, the Lepidosaurs, I presume, and the Archosaurs, which are older, more ancient groups of stuff, but turtles and crocodiles and birds are actually down here they're not as closely related as like snakes and lizards um, and tuataras are but they're more closely related to each other than these guys which is interesting because so birds and crocodiles are in the same order i think they're in the same group which is weird because if you think about birds you might think like maybe a lizard is most closely related to it but nope it's crocodiles so Sorry, I, I do get in the zone. I get quite amped up about reptiles. What's your favorite? Um, my, my favorite, like, group? Uh, that's a good question. That's a, that's a hard one, because there's, like, many different ways to, like, in terms of taking care of them, snakes are the easiest. So that's nice. Um, in terms of stuff that won't escape and can't easily get away from you and is pretty tough, turtles are the best, but they live a really long time, so that's not ideal. Time to start a pro con. <laughs> that would be a good idea. There's pros and cons to all of them. Never ever own a crocodilian, please. All cons. All cons, all the way down. Um... <laughs> So this is why when we talk about, like when I said before, there's the, the classification and how it's divided up. It is these four groups, but it's just much easier to be like, really, we talk about snakes, lizards, turtles, and crocodilians, because that's what people know of. If you say tuatara, people are like, what's that? And then they see it and they're like, it looks like a lizard. But it's not a lizard because it's not that simple. Uh, but cute. Cute is a pro. They're all cute, in my opinion. Actually, I don't know if I find crocodilians that cute, but turtles and snakes and um, lizards are pretty cute. So, 
today when I'm talking about reptiles, I'm probably just going to focus on like my four groups. I'm probably not going to talk about Tuataras a whole bunch. We can look at them really quickly. I don't know a ton about them and other than knowing that they're a really small group. Yeah, they're in endemic to New Zealand, so they're only found in New Zealand. And even though they look like lizards, they're not lizards, technically. It kind of depends on your definition of lizard. It's a whole thing. We use a lot of words for things that um, are not actually like related. This thing's pretty cute. Like, it's interesting because we, we differentiate between reptiles and birds when in reality we say crocodilians are reptiles, but they're actually more closely related to birds than anything else in the reptiles. Raymond's on my campsite. Raymond's on my campsite. Someone hold me. I mean, if Raymond isn't a reptile, I'm disinterested. Today, anyways. Hold on, I'm just gonna check. Do I have, like, shiny forehead? I do. But it's kind of dark in my room today. Oh, that's, like... Wait. You know what? That's fine. We'll go with that. I don't know which one Raymond is. I presume you're talking about Animal Crossing. Raymond Animal Crossing. <laughs> He's a cat. He's a smug cat villager. Excellent. He is very distantly related to Reptile. I like how this one's just his ears. Okay, anyways. Back to it then. These are really cute, the two Ataras. They grow very slowly, live to over a hundred years, and are the only survivors of an ancient group of reptiles which roamed the Earth, along with dinosaurs, over 200 million years ago. So that's pretty neat. Reptiles are cool because there's, like, quite a few groups that, like, kind of like the crocodilians, I believe, where it's like they actually haven't changed a whole bunch since like the time of the dinosaurs, which is cool. Hello, hi messenger, good to see you. Thank you for coming. Look at his face, look at his little face. Look at his little face, these are really cute. Okay, anyways, two Ataras, not lizards, they look like lizards. I don't think they have um external ears, like they don't have ear holes. That's one, I think, hold on, let's go back. There is some stuff that differentiates them. Uh, let's see. This is a lot of words I'm seeing here. Yeah, I know, but what's what's the difference? I just want to know what the difference is exactly, besides genetically. I don't know, but it doesn't look like they have ear holes, which lizards do have ear holes. That's group one that we're not really going to talk about. Um. I might just, like, knock out a couple. I love those critters. They're super cute. They look so friendly. They're probably not, but yeah. So I know the most about lizards, snakes, and turtles. Probably the most about snakes, maybe. Love your shirt. Thanks. It's, it's a, it's a, it's the Spirited Away shirt. It's very cute. <laughs> um... Yeah, so let's talk about uh, the archosaurs a little bit, because I know the least about them. I don't know that much about birds. Greek for ruling lizards. I mean, they're pretty gnarly. They're scary. The lamb jelly is <laughs> squeaks and excited. Yes! <laughs> so cute. Oh, God. Oh, so we're going to watch... I think I already announced this, but we're going to watch Kiki's Delivery Service on um, Saturday. Which I'm excited about. I do. I know a little bit about birds. Not a whole, not a whole bunch. Um. So crocodilians, they're big. I don't honestly know a whole ton about them, other than I know they always have long snouts. Um, they're semi-aquatic, semi-terrestrial, that kind of thing. They got some wicked jaw power. Uh, they lay eggs, I believe, most of the time. I don't know. I'm gonna say they lay eggs. There might be exceptions. There may not be. Birds are just reptiles with extra steps. <laughs> reptiles are birds with extra steps. I'm just saying. I know they can, they can um, move really fast when they want to, which is scary. Yeah, like it's saying here, they were the most... Um... Oh, wait, 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 sorry. Yeah, so ar the archosaurs, which are, you know, the birds and... Um... 
Evolutionary theory disagrees with you there. How dare you? How dare you? So the archosaurs, which include the crocodilians and the birds, they're the most successful. And, like, birds have evolved quite a bit over time, like, because of the whole, like, flight evolution thing, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's a more, like, quote-unquote recent evolution, like, compared to, like, millions and millions of years of evolution and stuff. I dare very much, thank you. Uh, but I believe, again, I don't know if it, only members to survive. The only members to survive through the Jurassic from the family Proteros such a day. Spicy. So they've been around for a very, very long time. Even mammals are kind of more of a, a more recent um, addition in terms, again, of like millions and millions of years. But these guys have been around for a very long time, which is spicy. Oh, there's a thing. I'm not gonna, I'm, I don't know if I could do this. I'm not gonna remember it. But I remember studying hearts, I believe. And it was like amphibians have um, one kind of heart. And I think it had to do with how many, um, like, atriums and ventricles it had or something. I don't really remember. I'm not gonna- this is what happens sometimes. It's like, I vaguely remember something, but I'm like, I don't remember it enough to, I, to the point where I feel like I can explain it well. Hold on. Let's, let's look up. Amphibian heart. Also, this may come, bring up gross stuff, so be aware of that. They only have half a heart. I think, yeah, so amphibians have a, th a, a three-chambered heart, so they have two atrium and one ventricle. I can never remember which one does which. I think the atria and the arteries go out and the veins and the ventricle, like, pump it th back into the heart. I think it's been a minute. And then, uh, not reptilian. Uh, crocodile. Crocodiles have fancy hearts. Crocodilian. Where, they, where it's spicy and you can like it has a four chambered heart and two ventricles and I think it I don't remember I often feel that especially for long times ago we still find things in very recent years that kind of shift our whole perspective don't we like for instance that one dino they put together wrong and they only figured that out very recently Crocs pro fancy heart well it's live Croc has yeah I think well that's kind of the thing about, like, just sort of, like, biology and just everything in general is we are constantly learning new things and sometimes we learn something and we're like, oh, so that theory we had was completely wrong. Which, again, comes back to the, like, if you weren't here before, we were looking at the, um, the phylogeny a little bit of reptiles. And basically, it's like, this whole thing, this is how we think they're related. <clears throat> we are Jon Snow, we know nothing. Absolutely. If you know you know nothing, you're off to a great start. But this is what we think how we think things are related but even this like can change sometimes and people have different theories about you know what um like groups of animals go where and it's it's always in flux so we know nothing we know more than we used to but at the end of the day we know nothing um and then reptilian heart there is something special about the crocodilian heart, and I don't remember why. <clears throat> oh. Okay, so amphibians, again, so they have three chambers because they have two atria and one ventricle. And I think most reptiles also have two atria, one ventricle. But crocodilians have an extra ventricle. So again, I think the ventricle brings it in. And I believe it has something to do with the fact that they can stay underwater for a long time. I don't remember. I sent Waz the best video the other day of a crocodile. It was very cute. It was like this little baby, um, some kind of crocodilian, and it was doing the like death rolls they do. It was going really fast, and it it was trying to eat something, and it couldn't get it. And at the end, it just like got a leaf. It was very cute. I like crocs from afar. Zippy, thank you. I like them from afar. I don't want to work with them very much, cause uh. Like, I've been bitten by a lot of things, and... No, thank you. Need to watch video. I have no idea where it is, for the record. Uh, why do crocodiles have a chambered heart? Yeah, so they need to reduce their oxygen loss. Um, and they can... So they can reduce their heartbeats. Spicy. Okay. 
very spicy. Turning crocodilians into bird crocodilian hearts into bird hearts. That's that's nice. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll watch this really quick. I don't want to sound. I just want to look at it. Look at him. He's trying so hard. And at the end, he accidentally grabs a leaf, and then he has a leaf in his mouth here. We'll watch it. We're going to watch it one more time. We'll watch it big. Actually, does that work? If I make it big, can you see it big? Oh, you can. Wonderful. So he's rolling. He's doing his death rolls. God, and then he doesn't even get the, like, meat, and then he, he tried. And then he, like, looks like he's dizzy. It's very cute. And then he eats the leaf anyway. Press, precious, precious. Absolutely precious. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so that's a tiny bit about hearts, because I don't know much about hearts off the top of my head. This is cool. I think this is the other group that didn't survive the Jurassic, right? The the Pro Teros Sucos? I don't know. It's all about true crocodile feet. Everyone has a big heart. Baby looks a little disoriented there. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to stay here a whole bunch of time because this is a thing I don't know as much about, and so I'm going to be learning with you, and that's not as fun. Let's go talk about other things that are more fun. Let's talk about... Turtles. So, turtles. I, I just, actually, let's, let's go here. So, sp some things about turtles, which you, you may know. They have a shell. That's a big thing. Um, they lay eggs. I don't believe any of them do live birth. Uh, what's some other spicy things about them? So, one really interesting thing that I like to make sure people know, because... Not everybody knows this, but I don't know if you've seen the old, like, Franklin cartoon um, where he can, like, take off his shell. Real turtles can't do that. Their shell is actually a part of their body. Uh, turtle skeleton. So their their um, shell is actually, like, their ribs. That's Their, their, their spine is fused to their shell. Um, let's see. Yeah, so you can see, like, in all these pictures, like, so... Their shell is bone covered in, um, like, a, a layer of keratin, which is the stuff that make up, makes up our fingernails. It's pretty cool. So you can see, like, that, that's not coming off. That is, that is what the inside of a turtle looks like. Daily reminder that <laughs> turtles are not in their shells. They are their shells. Yeah, it's pretty wild to think about, because you can see, like, this is where their, um the girdles are for their limbs and it just like goes right up into this big ass spine and there's a huge amount of room in here for all their guts and stuff very spicy so that's thing number one about turtles now in terms okay so there are depending on how you look at it there's either two or three ways you can like sort of group turtles i don't know if these are like if it's the official like Phylog uh, phyl phylogenetic um, ways you group them, but basically with turtles, there are turtles that are fully aquatic, so they have their legs are fins, and they really don't come out on land often, maybe once in a while to lay their eggs, but they really don't come out um, on land, and those are the turtles that you find in the ocean most of the time. And then there's turtles that are semi-aquatic, semi-terrestrial, so they have kind of, here, let's Actually, we'll, we'll get to that. So they have paddle-like um, legs, but they also can be used as legs. They usually have claws on them. And then there's tortoises. And tortoises have very blunt legs, and they can't swim. Um, I have seen some awful stuff, though, what happens if you keep tor turtles, tortoises, and dogs together. Yeah, there's a big thing just in general. Like, people think it's really cute when you let animals of different species interact and you really shouldn't do that just especially stuff like predator prey stuff um cats and dogs should never interact with reptiles in my opinion i i don't care if like they're super friendly and they get along well like you just shouldn't there's just too many things that could go wrong um the semis are mostly freshwater turtles too right yeah so basically the way people group them is either 
turtle tortoise or there's turtle to tortoise and terrapins. So basically, um, the way you do it, why don't people distinguish between turtles, terrapins, and tortoises? Yeah, we're about to talk about that. I scream at people that like cats and snakes. Yeah. So I generally in my life, I just use like turtle and tortoise. Um, because I, I think that's the more important one personally, and I'll tell you why in a second. But so again, so we have um like sea turtles. Oh. Sea sorry, sea hip you get the idea. Uh so you can see like right on them, like their legs look like fins. Like they're meant to be fins. They look like fish fins. And then there's um let's see, like a painted turtle. These are the ones that sometimes they're called terrapins, and they're the ones that are like partly on land and partly in water. And you can see, I'll show you a comparison um, with these guys and tortoises after, but you can see, so their legs, they look like legs, but at the end they're pretty flattened, so they can be used as paddles and they do have claws, whereas sea turtles don't have claws. And then there's, uh, let's do like red-footed tortoise. I like those guys. Uh, this is a good picture. And then, so with these guys, you can see their their legs. They're they're a lot more upright, and they're actually blunt. I wonder is there a better picture somewhere? Maybe like this. Yeah. So you can see their legs are really not paddles. They really can't swim. They shouldn't be put in water. Don't put them in water. <laughs> um, there's one really pretty one that lives close by here. Yeah, but basically. I I just am happy if people differentiate between turtles and tortoises because that's like can go in water, can't go in water, and like don't put tortoises in water. I do I do think it's it's totally fine to also differentiate between the semi-terrestrial, semi-aquatic um, ones and the fully aquatic ones. I think that's fine. But I'm happy if people differentiate between turtles and tortoises. And at the end of the day, like they're all like turtles. Depending on how you... But, like, if people use turtles for all of them, I use turtles for all of them. That's okay. Tortoises are turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises. So those are some uh, of the... Like, that's, like, the basic grouping of how we differentiate between them. My god. If you Google, like, European swamp turtle or something like that. Let's see. European swamp. There are some box turtles that are really pretty. And the, okay, the, the confusing thing is... Um, this just looks like a bus turtle. <laughs> so cute. I've never seen these before. This one? That looks like a box turtle shell. Um... But the, it does get very complicated because it's like some species are called turtles when maybe they're technically terrapins, um, and so on and so forth. And like there's box turtles, which are largely terrestrial. They don't really spend a lot of time in the water, but they're still turtles. Confusing. There's some... Okay, let's look up. Pretty box turtles. Look at these. Wow. Wow. Fox turtles are very cute. Okay, I'm gonna take a break really quick because I have to pee. Um, they live close to here and we used to keep Greek land tortoises at my place. Yeah, pond turtles, I guess in English. I think the speckles are to so cute. Okay, I will be right back. I'll be quick. I just have to pee. Bye!
I know. We were talking about turtles. Turtles. We talked really quickly about the, like, divisions and kind of turtles. Let's actually look at the, uh, the this. Yeah, so the, like it's, it's saying, like turtles can refer to the order of the whole or to freshwater and sea dilling um, turtles specifically, but it kind of is all over the place. Turtles are one of the oldest reptile groups and more ancient than snakes or crocodiles. My god. Yeah, and turtles are um, ectotherms. So this is... Uh, sorry, I'm having a... a brain melt. Snakes are definitely ectotherms. Lizards are ectotherms. I believe crocodiles are also ectotherms. I think the group as a whole are ectotherms, except for birds. I think birds are endotherms. Um, but there are sometimes exceptions to these things, like in fish and whatnot. But basically, ectotherm is the same thing as, like, cold-blooded. The problem with the term cold-blooded is it makes it sound like they're always cold, but all it really means is ectotherm means... Ecto is outside, Therm is temperature, it just means they're whatever temperature is around them. So to warm up, they have to go bask in the sun, and to get cool, they have to go into the shade. Um, their their body temperature just tends to be a lot more variable than like ours is, for example. Yeah, but you can see even here, like because they're high met metabolic rate, leatherback sea turtles have a body temperature that is higher than that of the surrounding water, so that could be arguably endothermic. That's what I always told people. I have dinos at home. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I I will say, especially like snapping turtles, like here we have common snapping turtles, and my god, did they look like dinosaurs. And so we're always, always, ours would always hide, because they have this really long tail, and they literally, you can see, they have the like little plates on them that look like a dinosaur. It looks like a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur, in my opinion. <laughs> Um, but they're real cool. But, 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 my God, they're, yeah. <laughs> Snapping turtles are pretty cool. I'm always cold. Maybe I'm cold blooded. Maybe. Get yourself a heat lamp. <laughs> Zippy. Oh my God. Yeah. So this is again what we were talking about before, which is like. If you want to get real technical, you can do turtle, tortoise, and terrapin um, for, like, fully aquatic turtles, fully terrestrial turtles, and, like, the kind of half and half, but it's all over the place, frankly. And in different places you go, I think. Yeah, like, North America, all Chilonians. I don't know which one that is, to be honest with you. Turtle may refer to them as a whole. Or particular turtles, uh, or maybe limited to aquatic turtles. So tortoises are Chelonians. Okay. Yeah, I'll... It's very confusing. <laughs> in winter, I legit go sit in the sun for a bit when I get too cold. They're vicious, though. At the lake nearby, people would throw their snapping turtles in. They had to close the lake because one of them... Well, here's the, here's the thing about snapping turtles. Okay, so there's two kinds that I know about. I don't know if there's more than this, but there's so there's common snapping turtles and there's alligator snapping turtles, right? And so here here's the thing. We'll talk about this one first. So these are the really, really big ones. They're gigantic. Um, they get to be... I like as big as alligators. That's why they're called alligator snapping turtles. And... Alligator snapping turtles are a turtle that they have, so they have a lure in their mouth. Their tongue is made to look like a worm, and that's to lure in fish so they can eat them. So really, like in the water, unless you stuck your hand in there or your foot in there, I guess, it's not going to bite you. Because we are not what alligator snapping turtles eat. Wear water shoes, I don't know. <laughs> but more importantly, and the one I know more about, um, because I think these, I don't know, I know these are found in, like, Florida and stuff. I think they're only found in the United States. So more importantly, common snapping turtles. 
which I know more about. Yeah, so the cannon and stuff. <laughs> I don't know what would, I don't know how strong their bite is, so I wouldn't put my foot in their mouth if you can handle it. But common snapping turtles, the thing about them is that snapping turtles, and, and animals in general, but talking about snapping turtles, they only bite for one of two reasons, which is A, they bite because there's food and you need your mouth to eat food, or they bite out of defense. Now, for the first one, they, like, you're not food to them. Um, snapping turtles mostly eat dead stuff or dying stuff. They're they're kind of like janitors. They just kind of clean up the dead stuff. They prefer to do that over eating live stuff because honestly, it's easier. <laughs> so much easier to get food that's just sitting there than to have to go catch it. And we're not food to them, so they're not going to bite us thinking we're food. We're not their kind of food. And the other time snapping turtles um, snap is out of defense. But in the water... They don't even need to bite because they're good swimmers and they could just swim away. Like, they have no reason to bite us. They're much better swimmers than, than we are. The only time snapping turtles will bite is when they're on land. Because, let's see, common. Uh, let me see your belly. That's a good picture. So, most, um... Turtle belly. <laughs> it's fine. Most turtles you can see, so they have a um so the the plastron, which is the belly shell, you can see on most turtles it covers their entire belly. They can pull their legs in and there's very little parts of them sticking out, which means if something were to chew on them, they would be pretty safe because they have all of that um shell to protect them. Their fleshy bits aren't out. But Snapping turtles, you can see there's, yeah. So they have a really tiny plaster on. They have a really tiny belly shell. It's kind of like a little, you call it like the, the bikini. And they have all of these squishy parts out. Um, I think the thing was they closed it since it was seen by the beach where people would be. It was assumed someone came into the lake bath onto the, wait. You said smuggled, but I don't know. Where, that's okay. I think the thing was they closed it since it was seen by the beach part where a lot of people would be used assume someone smuggled it in. Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean the like snapping turtles won't bite you if you leave them alone. <laughs> and again, like they only really bite when they're on land, because on land they're not nearly as fast. They can be fairly quick in like short bursts, but they're they're not very fast and they prefer to kind of just sit there and snap at you if they feel threatened. Because if they get flipped over they have all these squishy bits out so they have to have another defense because they don't have enough shell for it to just get chewed on and be fine because again squishy bits uh into the lake bath so and the kids beach basically with the kids ah, i see i see yeah i mean to be fair every single person i know who has gotten bit by a snapping turtle and i know a couple because i worked with people who worked with in the field catching wild snapping turtles is it was their fault turtles are real slow and snapping turtles are big most of the time. Like, it's very unlikely that you're going to be in a situation where one is going to bite you accidentally. Mostly, I would say, people get bitten because they're doing dumb stuff. Um, but one thing, general rule, animals won't bite you if you leave them alone. That's a great rule. That's absolutely true. Which is pretty sad if the turtle like it probably died. Yeah, that happens. I will say, the one exception... To the snapping turtle thing is we had a couple of snapping turtles um, at the place I worked and they, they were turtles that had been in captivity for most or all of their lives and they would snap at you in the water but the reason they would snap at you in the water is because we always gave them food like we were the, the ones who fed them and so if you were moving your hands around near the glass and stuff they would sometimes snap at it because they're like that's food so again but the, again that comes back to like the, the food thing not because they're scared of us because they're pretty used to us. Although, fun fact about um, snapping turtles, uh, the common snapping turtles, at least, I don't know about alligator snapping turtles, is so they can bite really far back. They can, their neck's pretty long. Their neck's like maybe almost as long as their tail, so you can see. Like, you can, yeah, you can see here. And they can reach like maybe like two thirds of the way back on um, their shell. So you really don't want to be touching their shell or even the sides. Like, that's, they can bite you there. But. Snapping turtles cannot bite underneath them. They can't bring their head down like that. 
and they can't reach the very, very back of them. So if you're a person who is ever in a situation where you have to move your snapping turtle off the road, you can see this guy's demonstrating it perfectly. This is an okay spot to hold them. The very, very back of their shell, like about here, that's safe to hold. And that's actually where their, their like leg, um, like where their legs are. And so you can like really dig your fingers in there and you can get a good hold on them. And that is the correct way to pick up a snapping turtle if you ever have to, like to help them across the road. Or if you're a person who does animal shows and has to bring around a snapping turtle. <laughs> I got bit by one of the grown-up freak turtles once. They bite so hard. I think I just wanted to check out my feet and see if they taste good. It bit me bloody. Yeah. Um, just in general with turtles, and this is a, a thing sometimes you see with people with snapping turtles, is they'll pick them up and they'll hold their tail. Don't hold animals by the tail, please. Because their tail is part of their spine, and if you suddenly yanked on it, you are yanking on their spine, which you probably know what doesn't feel good for anyone whereas this is all sturdy solid bone and you can pretty easily hold them with like that like this guy's doing it's perfect because then they can't reach you going this way unless you tilt them too far up snapping turtles are friggin heavy though i'm not gonna lie <laughs> you can also um to help them cross the road you don't have to pick them all the way up you can actually just kind of lift their back end and like wheelbarrow them across it's pretty entertaining um, I actually, I also got bit by a turtle once. I have a scar. I don't know if you'd be able to see it. Hold on. Let me, like, make this big so I can see. But I have a, a, a scar on this finger. Uh, I, I feel like it's too light to be able to see on the stream, but, like, we'll look. Wait. Nope, there's, this is not going to work. There's no way. Anyway, I have a little scar on my finger. Um, I've been bitten by lots of snakes. And a couple of turtles and a couple of lizards and turtle bites are the worst they are the worst and the reason for that is because turtles have beaks snakes have teeth snakes have little needle teeth so well they uh don't feel nice they don't leave a mark but these guys have beaks which means they take out like a chunk it's not just like poked with a needle it's they take a chunk gross anyway so that's why i have um a scar from that on my thingy yeah and i've been bitten by some lizards too but every kind of lizard i've been bitten by doesn't have teeth and didn't have a strong enough bite to actually cause any damage so like if you saw on my discord i actually posted a picture of one of my geckos biting me <laughs> it doesn't hurt because they just have like a kind of a hardened but here they don't have like actual teeth where we think about it. I imagine turtle beaks are similar to crab pinches. Yeah, or like like they have beaks kind of like a bird does. And you can imagine getting bit by a bird. It sucks. Bad times. But honestly, in, in terms of um bites, I would take getting bit by uh, a snake over like most other things. Like dogs, cats, rats. God, no. <laughs> My tortoises would climb by pulling themselves up by the neck. That's so funny. Turtles are great. Turtles are actually decent climbers, weirdly. Like, they're really not graceful, but they can get up there. Like, um, snapping turtles can climb chain link fences. What about Chip? I would absolutely take a snake over getting bit by Chip. Chip is a rat, and I don't know where his mouth has been. He's probably chasing bunnies. Anyway, so that's a little bit... About snapping turtles, um, what are some other cool turtles? So here in Ontario, we have eight kinds of turtles. I'm going to talk probably about some more like that because those are the ones I know about. I have hermit crabs and I've been pinched once while I was transferring uh, tanks and it was a pain because you can't rip them off. You just got to let them let go on their own. That sounds awful. Like at least with snakes, you can kind of pry them off. It's a pain in the ass, but you can kind of pry them off. And most, um, like, turtles and stuff on the plus side, when they bite you, it's usually a defensive bite, and they let go pretty quick. Uh, my fiancé got bit by a dog once. It's horrible. Can't recommend. Yeah, don't do that. Let's snake teeth. I'm talking about non-venomous snakes, though, to be fair. Like, these are all venomous snakes you're seeing. I don't want that. I just want to look at the little, the little bitty. Let me, let me see. Probably 
features. You can see, uh, these, these even look big. Like I, most of the time you, like you can see they have teeth, but you can't even see them. That's how thin they are. But anyway, it really doesn't hurt. I have pictures somewhere of, hold on, snake bite wound. That's, none of these are what it looks like. Also, I'm sorry we're getting into maybe gross stuff. No, that's not what I meant. How about this? Oh, garter snake bite. I had no idea snakes had little teeth like that. Legit that they just had fangs. Honestly, a lot of snakes don't have fangs because they don't have venom. Ugh. Look at this. So cute. <laughs> God, I have a video somewhere of a bunch of babies um, when I was feeding some some baby garters, and they're friggin' tiny when they come out, and I just, like, they were all biting at me because my hands smelled like fish, and it was the cutest thing ever. Defensive bite or wild testing if you're a food. They do test very hard. That's true, but, like, I mean, in the, in the wild, it's a little different with pets. In the wild, they really will only bite you out of defense. But uh, my, I have a snake, um, Osiris, the big um, king snake, and he loves to test if things are food with his mouth, and he'll grab on and not let go for like half an hour, as you might have seen in my other stream where I brought him up and he was last shot on my glove, because he's a turd. He's a very cute turd, but baby garter snakes. I just thought the non venomous ones just didn't have teeth because they dislocate their jaw and gobbled up their food. Oh, how uneducated it was. These are not even, they are, they're honestly smaller than this. Where's a baby baby? Yeah, this is what they look like when they come out. This is how small they are. Which is, they're so freaking cute, but oh my god. Trying to handle them and stuff and like move them around so you can clean and stuff is so stressful because they have the tiniest, most fragile bones and you have to like, I've never hurt one, thank god. But I always, every time I like went to go do something with them, I was always like, so ginger because like they have just the thinnest little bones um yeah well the so the reason that snakes have like little needle teeth is because they don't use their their teeth for chewing like you have that right but they they use it to hold on um their teeth actually point backwards so if something is trying to pull out of their mouth it, it keeps them in um and then so we're, we're sorry well i don't know if i have anything else to talk well we'll finish talking about turtles and then we'll get to we'll get to snakes i promise Okay, what else? Turtles lay eggs. It's pretty cool. <laughs> um, sea turtles come up on land to lay their eggs. And, oh, this is a, a, fun, a fun fact. Oh, wait. They don't really dislocate their jaw, do they? Thought it was just very stretchy and attached with less ligaments or something, or they do they? So, the thing about the, the dis, dislocating thing is to dislocate your jaw, it would have to be like attached to begin with and with snakes it's just not um their their bottom jaw is separated to two pieces that are attached with a ligament and i believe their top and bottom jaw are also not connected like ours are let's hold on or it just opens really wide i don't remember let's let's go look snake bones mm. yeah you can like you can see here like they're attached but not nearly the same way like ours is human uh, jaw. How about that? Yeah, you can see like our jaw. It like this. This it, this is where it connects, and that whole piece is connecting it. Whereas this. Connection. And you can see the yeah, the, the bottom jaws are just they're completely separated. Um, which gives them lots of room to open their mouth. <laughs> yeah, because they, they don't like dislocate it because dislocating requires like actually like moving it out of, out of place, but it doesn't go out of place because it was never in a place to do that to begin with. Um also you can see God, we're just talking about snakes now. It's okay, we'll get back to turtles when I'm done talking about this. Um, snakes have really, really tiny bones. Snakes are actually very fragile. Um, when we would let people hold the snakes, and even now when I hold my snakes and stuff, like, you can't squeeze them. You have to, like, let them go, and you can't even pull on them too hard, because you could really, 
really easily hurt them. Um, I know nothing about reptiles, so I'm enjoying this. I have a lot of misconceptions. Yeah, a lot of people do, and that's okay. If there's anything um, at any point, <laughs> dislocating means locating it. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. What does dislocating actually mean? Oh, wait, no, I don't want to see whatever that is. Nope. Yeah, yeah, it, like, dislocate. I believe, like, with your shoulder, it's like, oh, your shoulder is no longer where it's supposed to be. But that doesn't happen with snakes, because that is where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Back to, I pro we'll get to snakes next. I'm almost done talking about turtles. So, um, again, turtles, legs and stuff, which is cool. But there are some kinds of turtles where they lay eggs, and the sex of the babies is actually determined by the temperature around the eggs, which is wild. Uh, temperature. I don't remember what it's called. Six. Termination. Turtles. I believe it's like hot chicks and cool dudes was the thing we did. So it's like warmer is girls, but I don't remember. Or it was the extremes. It might also be the extremes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's more than one pattern. Um, so like we have like a joint and they don't. I never thought about the way. Yeah, I don't know exactly, to be fair, how the their top and bottom jaw is connected, other than the fact that it, like, it is, but not nearly as, like, it's not as solid as a connection as ours is. And obviously they all also just have, like, longer, thinner jaw bones. Um, yeah, temperature-dependent sex determination. So, this is a thing that happens with turtles. I don't remember which one happens with turtles or if it's both. It might also depend on the species, but there's two ways it can happen, which is cooler temperatures makes males, warmer temperatures makes females, or you can have that there's, um, at the extremes, it's females, and in the middle, it's males, which is what pattern two is, which is pretty freaking cool. I just, that honestly blows my goddamn mind, because it's like, you know, sometimes, to get off on a bit of a tangent here, we talk about... Like, it's a huge conversation now about, like, you know, what determines sex and just, you know, in terms of people's, like, how we should identify people and what terms we should use and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, and then you see something like this where it's like, literally, it's not even the genetics, it's the freaking temperature that decides what sex are going to be. And you're like, you know, I think it's a little more flexible than we maybe think it is. Um... <laughs> We actually had breeders, and I know some other breeders would put them higher temps to get females, but also that might kill the eggs. We just always left it up for chance. We actually used to do that. I believe, um, at my work, we used to do, there was a bit where we did 90% females, 10% males, and then after that, we kind of just did 50-50. <laughs> like, breeding machines as first breeders. Sorry, that reads confusing. I, I get, I get what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. But anyway, all I'm saying is sex is more complicated than we think it is, and anyone that tells you otherwise is wrong and knows nothing about biology. It's all confusing, it's all over the place. It changes. I think we talked about that too at some point, which is like, again, a little thing, which, like for example, in fish, I know for sure, I'm sure in other species too, but there, you can have, um, species that are like sequential hermaphrodites which means they start out you know as a male and become a female or other way around you can have some that are both at the same time like it's just so li literally anytime someone is like oh well if sex says you know you're a male then you're a male it's like a, have you ever looked into biology in your life i mean for a group you should have, always have more females for group group dynamics also just in terms of breeding more females equals more eggs because a male can fertilize multiple females, right? Seahorses. I I don't think seahorses do hermaphroditism, but I could be wrong. Yeah, this isn't this isn't um right. Just like what's cryptic? Like, the males give birth, but they're not, they're still males. They just carry the eggs. They have a pouch to carry the eggs. They're not the ones that made the eggs. What is this, though? Oh, wait, this is not. 
uh, not flatworms. I, I I want to know about seahorses. I don't think seahorses are hermaphrodites. <laughs> I think it's because seahorses don't apply to... Yeah, it, I mean, it's literally a thing of, like, they breed and the female gives the eggs to the male as opposed to, like, the male giving the sperm to the female, which is, like, the normal, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> Males will inflate their pouches to say, Hey, I'm, I'm ready to go! I think I, I think you're right. I feel like something about clownfish and hermaphroditism, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, you're right. They they can change their sex. So sometimes, um, like sequential hermaphrodites will change their sex based on age. I think sometimes there's other factors like. If there's just not enough females, they'll do it, but I don't know how that one works. So even this, like, sex of individuals is permanent and determine the moment of conception. Like, I don't, I don't think I agree with that. That is not correct. That's just not correct. Yeah, I just want to know when they do it. Oh god, there's all these words and I vaguely remember them. But not really at all. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, all the smaller fish are male, if the breed large breed female. Her male mate changes sex to a female in the next order. Oh, spicy. Yeah, because there does seem to be a thing where it's like in sequential hermaphrodites. I think it, I think it's more common for it to be male to female just because it's like um, a female, like the, the bigger a fish is, the more chance it has um, of surviving, I think. Yeah, that's, that's a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> um and so the the females well i i think it depends on the fish actually because sometimes the males protect the females sometimes the females are on their own i don't know i know it can bo go both ways it depends on the species finding nemo would be a whole other story i think marlin would have become female nemo male because of the need yeah i think did it say they bec they start as one or the other hold on hold on where did it go uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, the two large groups of two large fish. I like that signature. Oh, they smell like fish. So these ones, I maybe start out as male. Anyway, God, we're off on fish. We're talking about we're supposed to be talking about other things. Because he was the larger fish when the others were eaten. Oh my God, wasn't it the babies got eaten? Like, wasn't there already just a breeding pair of one male, one female? <laughs> okay. Anyways. Uh, I think that's, like, more or less ever- I don't- I can't think of any other cool- Oh, no, I, I lied. I can think of more cool reptiles- or turtle things. There's one other thing I want to talk about. Um, so- Wow, there's a couple other things. So there's, um, softshell turtles. Like, for example, here we have one called a spiny softshell. And- Softshell turtles, as you might imagine, they have kind of a more fleshy covering rather than the um, the keratin. Sorry for all the other. It's okay. It's okay. That's what we're here for. So softshell turtles, I believe, are generally spend more time in the water, uh, and they they have like the way it works is generally turtles that spend more time on land have bigger more high dome shell and it's because it's thicker because they need pr more protection like again if we go back to tortoise you can see like that's all big shell that's a big big shell versus 
this one. And it's because soft shell turtles are not quite as much meant to be like chewed on. Whereas this one, their defense is like, I'll just let you chew on me. They look like a turtle soaked too long in the bath. We call them pancake turtles. <laughs> That's what they are. They're so cute. Anyways, oh wait, oh my god, shield your eyes, shield your eyes. Anyways, um, so we have, this is the kind we have here actually, the spidey soft shell, and they have this funny little snorkel nose, and it's so they can just stick the tip of their nose out of their water and breathe. Um, and then, again, in, in tortoises and just like stuff like box turtles that spend a lot of time on land, um, they have bigger shells, but some turtles... Um, so here we have the Blanding's turtle and the box turtle have this, which is they actually have a hinge on their shell. So this is the hinge and it means that when they're scared, they can actually pull the front part of their plaster on their belly shell all the way up closed. So their head is completely protected. There's no space for a predator to get it. And that's because again, they're like turtles are, can go at some, a decent clip in the water, but on land they're slow. And again, their only defense is like, I'm just gonna let you chew on me till I get bored, till you get bored. So they have even um, more defense against that because they're protecting their head, which is the most important thing. Protect your head, always. Yeah, turtles are also very cool because they can um, heal from some pretty horrific injuries. I'm not gonna bring those up on stream because they can be some pretty gross images. But, um, they, like, as long as their head's okay and their vital organs are okay, they can heal from, like, missing bits of their shell. They can, like, they'll be fine, um, with, like, if they're missing a leg and stuff like that. Uh, I think it might even be that they can heal from spinal damage. I'm not positive on that one. Um, and it may have to do with, like, whether or not the nerves have been severed. Or anything like that but they can heal from some wicked injuries which is good because they get hit by cars a lot because we make cars all over the place where they live so that's unfortunate um i'm gonna go to the bathroom again really quick because i have to pee and then i think that's that's probably good for turtles and we'll move on to snakes probably yeah i think we'll move on to snakes Seen a lot of that. I think it's worse when they got bad nutrition. Healing from that doesn't work. Yeah, that's fair. And, like, here we have a couple of um, turtle hospitals. And, like, that's that's kind of what I, what I mean when I say they can heal from some pretty horrific stuff. Like, it's a little different if you're out in the wild and you're fending for yourself and you, got hit, you just got hit by a car and, like, your odds of surviving aren't great. But if someone, if a person finds a turtle and it's been hurt... Um, again, usually, like, if their head's okay and their vital organs are still in their body, then they'll heal. Which is great. Also, it gets really gross. We used to get turtles through, um, that were on their way to the turtle hospital, and it was rough sometimes. Um, I will be right back. I have to pee. BRB.
sorry I keep not putting on music. It's uh, It wasn't working earlier, and I need to fix it, but I haven't done it yet. <laughs> we were talking about snakes. Snakes. Snakes, snakes, snakes. Maybe like to Wikipedia. I'm sorry, I'm busy right now. No, I don't want to tell, t tell people my email. So, snakes are the weirdest, probably group in my opinion. They're just the most different. Um, snakes, as you probably know, they don't have legs. Um, they eat animals whole. There's no chewing. They swallow them whole. They have wicked digestion. It's very cool. Um, they eat, like, depending on the species of snake, they can eat, you know, every, every, like, week to, like, they can go months at a time without eating and they can be perfectly fine. Uh, there's a lot of venomous snakes, so they inject, um, toxin, which is a whole other thing that we talked about previously and I think it's really cool. There's just a lot of wild things about snakes. They have ear bones, but they don't have external ears. Turtles have external ears, so do lizards, but snakes don't. Snakes are wild, and they're all carnivores. Um, turtles, as a group, are omnivorous. There's some that eat more plants, there's some that eat more uh, bugs, fish, that kind of thing. I once rescued, rescued a little natal bush snake from my school, safe released into a nature reserve. That's, that's nice, that's awesome. People, I think another really interesting thing about snakes, and we did talk about this when I talked about venom and stuff a little while ago is we have an instinctual fear of snakes which is very interesting because that had to have evolved from somewhere so there's a good chance that there ha has been pressure on our species or on our like on ancestral species um from snakes and it, there's a good chance that at some point they're a much bigger problem than they are now i mean there still can kind of be a problem because people do die from venom still but that's not really the snake's fault it's kind of our fault that's just life i've never seen a snake here but one time my aunt accidentally stumbled stumbled into an adder nest the only poisonous snake here so really quick talking about misconceptions and stuff and this is also something i talked about in the venom stream but we're going to talk about um so in terms of toxin in animals that are toxic uh, there, so there's poisonous and there's venomous. Poisonous means it's an animal that produces toxin, but it's not an active defense. It doesn't really, like, control it. So if something were to bite it or eat it, it would get very sick and might even die. Whereas venomous means it actively injects toxin into another animal. And this is often offensive for prey, but it can also be defensive. Um... In South Africa, we have a snake called the egg eater, and they're non-venomous and only eat eggs. Oh my god, I love egg eaters. Okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna go to YouTube. We're gonna, oh, I accidentally, I don't want this. I want, oh god. What? You can just look at all my, I, listen, I've been just watching Gale lately. Don't, don't judge me. Egg eating snake. They sound oddly adorable. They're really cool, because what they do is... So they can eat eggs, and then they basically, well, it's like in their, their throat, in their esophagus, they crunch it up, and then they regurgitate the eggshell. So let's, let's look at this really quick. It's very cool. Oh god, I didn't want it that big. I just wanted it like mid-size, so I can still see chat, please. There you go. Oh, let's, let's watch this man. It's very spicy. I think, I think it's fascinating because... Um, like, it just, it, I can't, I can't believe they can get purchase on that enough to, like, not, not purchase, um, maybe that was the word, like, traction? Like, that's wild to me. I mean, they kind of, like, just push it into the ground, like, look at him go! Wow. Look at him go. What a madman. <laughs> they have no teeth, which I guess they don't need them, because you can't even sink your teeth into an egg anyways. Yeah, the, like, I think traction was the word. Purchase is maybe a word for it, but I don't know. Wow. And then they just crack it. I think at some point, I don't have the sound on, but you can maybe sometimes hear the it crack. The, another cool thing is so you can see down here their scales. Like, they have scales, like, covering their whole body, but you can see how friggin' stretchy their skin is because it has to be. Because you can see how big of meals they actually get down in there. So, 
absolutely wild. Look at him go. I think this is... Are we gonna... I, I just wanna get to the part where... Yeah, we, like, push it down, and then... I'm, I'm gonna speed it up. Me accidentally taking a too big chunk of dinner and rolling with his face. Yeah, that's the same. I'll just make it, like... I'll make it double speed. Why not? Well, now, we'll go crazy. More pushing so you can see, and then their muscles contract to, like, squish it down. Which is pretty cool. I want, okay, I kind of want to hear this, I'm not going to lie. Sorry if this is really loud. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did you guys hear that? It friggin' cracked. Okay, I don't want. And then they just, like, that... What an absolute, like, wild thing. It crunch, and then they break it down, and then the shell's going to come back up. So cool. It's COVID. I wonder what it would feel like to get bit by that thing, since it doesn't have teeth. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Hit! God! <laughs> oh, that's gross. But cool! Took 40 minutes for that to happen. Anyways, no Swiffer. But, so that's egg-eating snakes. Um, snakes can eat a lot of different things. Again, they're all carnivorous, but it's like some of them, the really little ones, they eat um, stuff like worms, they can eat slugs, all that kind of thing. There's some that eat like bugs, like crickets and stuff, but there's not a very many of those, to my knowledge. Um, and then there's some that will eat like birds, um, rodents and stuff like that. Uh, some, I had a thought and I forgot it was. Some eat fish. There's lots of different kinds. Depends on where they live. Frogs. Other snakes. Many things. This is adorable and slightly menacing at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Snakes are a wildly wild group. There's a lot of them. Um, so they're also ectothermic, like we talked about before. They have to regulate their body temperature by, you know, going to where it's warm and then going to where it's cold because they don't make their own heat. Um... And I believe, yeah, they, so they only, ha they have one big lung. I think they have, like, the, they have, mm, I think they have two lungs. But again, one of them is much bigger and actually works, like it says, yeah, one functional lung. I couldn't tell you where, like, any particular organ is on a snake. They're all over the place. Uh, I don't know about lizards. We're gonna, I'm not gonna talk about this right this second, but there are kinds of lizards that are legless, but they're still lizards. We'll talk we'll talk about that later, but it's it's spicy. Please get the natal bush snake, Google. Oh my god, I have a snake to show you guys after. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! So precious! So precious! Look at its tiny face! Look at it! Look at it! Oh my god, I love the ones with big eyes. Okay, what's that one called? I think it's called like a flying snake? That's my guess. God, look at this thing. This is one of my favorites. This is like the, the shoelace snake. Look at it. It's so funny. It's so thin. <gasps> there he is. There he is. <laughs> oh, so good. That's so good. God, they're just so precious. Look at this thing. It is judging you. Absolutely judging you. <laughs> I saw Ringladder in the wild runs. I have no idea what that is in English. I don't know either. Ringladder. Mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what that is in English. English? Snake. Uh, grass snake? Spicy. Sometimes called the ring snake or water snake. There's another kind of water snake. I don't think we have these here. We have water snakes, but I don't think they're this. Eurasian non-venomous snake. Feeds exclusively on amphibians. It's pretty cute. I think garter snakes are very cute. If you want big eyes, Google Blooms. Like, oh my god. Oh god, oh god. Boom slang. Oh, look at this man. <gasps> look at him. <laughs> Big eyes. 
Um, yeah, so here are the most common kind of snake we have is the garter snake. I believe, oh, that's not how you spell that. Please stop, please stop. I think the most common one's actually the Eastern garter snake. Oh my god, garter, I can spell words. Um, fun fact, if, if garter snake is like a common thing you have around here, it's spelled garter like the, um, like the leg thing. I forgot the, the... <laughs> Some people think they're called like garter snakes with a D or like garden snakes or whatever, but they're called garter snakes with a T. Like the thing people used to use to hold up their socks or whatever. I don't know a whole lot about garters. Highly venomous. Garter snakes? <laughs> garter snakes aren't venomous. Or are you talking about the boom slang? Go back to the boom slang really quick. Venomous. Venomous. It is venomous. Many venomous members of the colubrids are harmless to humans because of small venom glands and inefficient. <laughs> Aww. They try their best. Highly venomous. Yeah. Probably leave that one alone. It's a good idea to just leave animals alone if you don't know what they are. Especially snakes. Yeah, but this is the most common one um, you find. They're pretty cool. Hmm. There's also one called the crew solder here. That one's definitely venomous. Look at that one on crew solder. Common European viper. Yes, vipers. Or adder. Yeah, those are often venomous. They have some wicked fangs. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, so if it doesn't have fangs, um, there I, I believe there's three kinds of... There, there's like three groups maybe that are venomous and they have three different placements of fangs. I... It's like... It's like... Oh, wait. Hold on one sec. Because there's colubrid snakes, there's like elapsids or something, there's a lot of them. Um, cross means screws, and that's kind of the pattern on the snake. Yeah, we're, I find people in general are not like, like garter snake, we call them that because they were stripy like garter snakes or something like that. And like here we have, um, what are they called? Smooth green snakes, and they're green. But this is nice, to be honest, because it makes it much easier to remember. It's like, smooth green snake. Okay, it's green. That's easy. Here, funnily enough... Oh, god, what just happened? I got a, I got a thing, but nothing came up on my activity feed. What just happened? Someone's following? I'm sorry, I don't know where it just went. Hello? Hello? Why would you not... Why will you not tell me... Oh, it's loading. I apologize. Thank you. Whoever just followed me, I will figure it out when my activity feed decides to load again. Actually, but I can see it on my screen. Hold on. Aw, uh, thank you, Aim Hergen, for the follow. I appreciate that. I think we're at 99 in that case. One more follow to 100. Anyways. Yeah, my activity feed is loading. So, give it a second. Um, here we go. Anyway, smooth green snake. So, this is gonna bother me if I don't figure it out. I believe there's, I can never remember which. Like there's Viperidae things. There's I think three. I think there's three. I don't remember what the other ones are though. I'm not gonna lie. Um, venomous snake. Let's see. No, I just want to know what what groups they're in. Maybe if we go back to snake, we can figure that out. That'd be about the venom. Cobras, vipers, and closely related species. Yeah. Okay. I don't. But like. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There's a bunch. There's several different groups. Oh, here we go. I like viper a day. Definitely. Uh, colorbred. But like, I don't know. This one definitely. And I think there's one more, but I don't remember which one, to be honest. Gotta be one of these ones. Water snakes, you know. Please don't. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so we have um, the viper group of venomous snakes, and then we have the lapids, which I think are like cobras and other stuff like that. They're not all venomous. Smooth green snake, oh my god. I don't, my activity feed has just given up. Maybe I can pull it up on my phone. Um, and there, there's one more, but I don't know what. 
Ooh, we can see this is a rattlesnake skull with the long fangs. And is there, can I see? Ooh. Hold on, I had a book. I had a book here. Also about reptiles, because I was looking at it earlier, you can see. About reptiles and also amphibians and invertebrates. But I think it was talking about this thing that I want to talk about. About the fangs. It's going to bother me. So just give me a second here. Don't care about turtles. Really fucked about those. It also has some very nice pictures. God, wait till we get to the lizards. There's just... Lizards are a whole... A whole nother thing. There's lizards everywhere. Their skulls are so tiny. They are. They're so small. They are small. Okay, but like... Polybrids, elapids, and viperidae. Oh, like it was called. Okay. Okay. Do you have... <gasps> Look at them. Colubrids are, um, rat snakes are in that family, and rat snakes are a pretty common, um, pet snake choice. You, you're not going to show me. What, what in here is venomous? Tell me the venomous. All right, I sadly have to go. I want to soak up a little bit of sun before the stream later. I have your audio in the background. I can't really take the laptop to the balcony. Fair enough. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. Getting my book out. Hold on. This is basically saying. I'm gonna look at my book. So it's saying that colubrids, the ones that are venomous, which I don't think there's that many, maybe, have um, their fangs are a lot further back there and they're smaller, whereas elapids and vipers have them that are like at the front. Vipers have it like the most forward. That's interesting. Okay, cool. We're not going to talk a ton about venom because I have talked about venom before. But basically, what it comes down to is there's a couple different kinds of venom. But they, like in my head, there's the major difference of like ones that cause cell death and necrosis, which is gross and horrible, but less dangerous than the ones that are neurotoxins and they affect your nervous system, which is really scary. Those are really bad ones because they can make you stop breathing and stuff like that. So. Fun, fun stuff. Um, I don't need any of this. I don't think spicy. Okay, that's. Oh, I I opened a lapid and I got. Well, that sounds terrifying. It is. That's why we just leave snakes alone. Fun that game's redeemed. Random wants fact. No problem. Let me let me go find one. Um. Oh, here's one. So I have um. As it stands currently, I have one tattoo. I'm, I want to get two more. I want to get one right here. That's just a bunch of animals. And I want to get one on my thigh that's also a bunch of animals. But the only one I have right now, I'm, I'm wondering if I can show you without like accidentally flashing my boob because it is on my ribs. Just like it's right there. So I have a tattoo right there. And it says, be big, be tall. And it has two little, two little pine trees. And so my sister has a matching one. And the... um. Quote, be big, be tall is what my mom says a lot. And it's her always like, okay, you can do it. Like, go be an adult. She goes, you know, be big, be tall. So, we're all, and we've all been really close. So when me and my sister wanted to get our first tattoo, it, was, it just made sense to get one that was, you know, close to our hearts and put it close to our hearts. I don't remember what side your heart's on, but you get the idea. Be big, be tall. Yeah, that's so precious. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. It was a really um, great thing to do. So, and, and, but... We were actually talking about it lately, which is, like, so we have, it's here, and, like, me and my sister were talking about this, and you, we never see it. Like, other people see it sometimes, but it's, it's, it's in such a hidden spot that you don't really see it. So the next one I want to get is going to be here, which is much more visible, but also could be covered if I need it to be. So I'm excited about that. Thank you for redeeming that fact. I'm going to, I just realized I need to um, add some more because I'm running low, but it's okay. Uh, but, 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 what do I, what do I care about here? Let's, so, really quickly, um, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about some snakes that are, like, we're gonna talk about probably snakes you'd commonly see in the pet trade, because I feel like that's kind of, um, a more widespread thing, because I don't know, you guys are probably all from different places, I don't know necessarily what kind of snakes you might have there, but, um, the kind of snakes that are easy to take care of and are quite common in the pet trade are, 
probably everywhere. Three out of four of my tattoos are animals. Yeah, <laughs> that's I f I'm at this point. I'm like, I figure if I, I'm going to have one that's like more visible and people are going to see it and I want it to be something I'm not going to like regret later. Like, I don't think I can go wrong with animals. I don't know. Somebody else did something. And I don't know what it is. Oh, thank you for the follow sheep thief. My activity feed is still not working. So I just have to look at um that. Oh, my God. Is that a hundred? Are we at a hundred now? Hold on. Um, sometimes it doesn't update perfectly, but. I'm gonna see if I can just pull it up on my phone so I can see it on there. Since the activity feed has just decided to load forever. I don't know why. What if I just close you and open you back up again? How about that? How do you feel about that? The answer is badly. It's just gonna keep all right. No problem. Yeah, what are what animals are your tattoos? I um here, let me I'm gonna go off a little tangent right here. Uh one line animals, something like that. I I really like these, um, yeah, these. I would love to get something like these. Like, I want to get like four or five of them right here. But I love these little animals that they're like the the drawings where you put down your pen and you make it with one line. I love them. And I think they're just like really simple and pretty. And of course, I have to like then pick a bunch or like four or five out of like all of these, which is going to suck. But that's what I want. And then um, on my thigh, I want this really like a big um, scene with like flowers and stuff and like little animals in it. That's what I want in my life anyways. And then I think I'll be satisfied. I'll be satisfied with all my piercings and tattoos, I think. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. You know how tattoos can be. Um, what were we talking about? We were talking about snakes, right? I was going to talk about some of the, the pet trade ones. I have mouse, blue, butterfly, and elephants. That's so cute. I definitely would get a little elephant on here. I don't know what else yet, but definitely an elephant. They're just really cool. Um, So we're going to talk about... Oh my god. Oh my god. Nothing happened. Thank you. Um, Oh god. So let's say Liz Clark for the follow. Sorry for my screen going away. I had to minimize it and Streamlabs doesn't like it when I do that. Thank you for the follow. We're definitely past 100 now. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm out of water. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for learning about snakes. <laughs> it's it's so nice um, when you get really excited about something and people want to hear you be excited about it. The mouse and elephants are just outlines and the butterfly is color line. That's really cool. I've always loved the like kind of watercolor tattoos like those i've always loved. thank you for teaching us about snakes i i'm happy to do so um but again we're gonna talk i think a little bit about because there's there's too many to just talk about in general so maybe we'll talk about a couple of we talked about garter snakes another common one we have here is the water snake and then i'll probably just move on to talking about one in the pet trade but i think this is a, nor a, a common one in north america i'm loving the stream oh thank you and so the interesting thing about water snakes is here, um, we only have water snakes. There's another kind of snake. It's called a water moccasin. I think it might also be the cottonmouth. I think that might also be what it's called. And water moccasins are venomous. I don't think I can spell moccasin. Oh, this is embarrassing. Did I spell it right? Oh, go me. Um, but you can see, yeah, cottonmouth. Um, water moccasins and also because the names are similar people are like oh it's the same snake and because they um they're kind of dark and they can have like the dark stripes and water snakes are also dark and have dark stripes people get really freaked out that water snakes are water moccasins but here in canada we don't have water wa moccasins we only have water snakes and well they're rather feisty and um i've been bitten <laughs> more by water snakes than anything else although to be fair, that was because it was when I was feeding them and my hands smelled like fish. And so, understandable. But, um, yeah, I mean, the best thing in general, to, to be fair, is like, if you don't know what it is, just leave it alone. But it's always good, I think, A, to just educate yourself and to know what's around here again, because, so I've done a lot of the, the reptile shows, and sometimes we did the displays and stuff like that, and people would... People loved to be like, oh, that's a, like, this. And you're like, that's not even close. And that's a way more dangerous snake than I would ever take out. And it was definitely, like, 
we got um water moccasin for this we people like to tell me that um hognose snakes so hognose snakes are another one we have here up up and as part of their defense um they they puff up kind of like a cobra does and it can be really scary and people like to tell me yeah like the hognose snake is sometimes called a puff adder like which is not true like adders are venomous snakes and hognoses are, are not adders and people like to be like oh that's a dangerous snake and it's not and people are crazy anyway is it actually is a puff adder an actual thing or is it just a, a name people like to give the hognose oh no it's an actual thing okay i wasn't sure about that so people love to tell me that um hognose snakes which are the most harmless snake you can deal with honestly because even when they're scared they'll um bluff strike which is me which means they'll strike at you but they won't even open their mouth because they're not going to bite you um they like to tell people that they're this and they're not and I've, I've literally had a conversation with a woman where we were doing like a a display so we had tables out we had like tanks with snakes out and we were like chatting with people letting people hold our corn snakes and stuff and a woman came up and i heard her say to her husband um oh like that one's a puff adder and i like heard that and i came over and i started talking to them about like this is the hognose snake this is what we have here like blah 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 and then i i walked away and as soon as i walked away i heard the lady go yeah no that's a puff adder and i was like all right i give up sometimes you just have to give up on people you know <laughs> Stupid phone, sorry, I wanted to say puff adders are fairly common here. Yeah, well, that's, again, it's, like, that's a good reason to know what you have around there, because there are a lot of snakes that look similar, and, again, like, you should just leave them alone overall, but it's always good to know, like, what the actual risk is, because, like, here in Canada, we have three kinds of venomous snakes. In Ontario, where I live, we only have one, and they're really not dangerous. Um, they just want to be left alone. They're pretty small snakes. They're not going to bite you unless you step on them or try to pick them up. And as long as you're careful, you're not going to do either of those things. And even if they did bite you, their venom um, is, like, it's not that dangerous. It, w it would be very uncomfortable and you should definitely go to a hospital. But, like, you're not going to die. So, if you live here, it's, like, something where um, we had to be, like, you know, there's really no dangerous snakes here. There just isn't. <laughs> Um, but obviously in other places there are dangerous snakes, and so fear of snakes is very understandable. And it's good to be able to identify. Um, it's interesting though, because imagine only having three venomous snakes. Yeah. We're too far, we're too far north for a lot of things. We only have, in Ontario, maybe also Canada, I can never remember which one it is, but in Ontario for sure we only have one kind of lizard. Because we're too far north for most lizards to live. Um, uh, what was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying before this. Something, something, hog nose, something, something. Puff adder, we have many that can kill you, a few in less than an hour. Oh, I remember what I was going to talk about. Yes, that's totally fair. Totally something you should be aware of. But the interesting thing is, so... You guys have probably heard of mimicry, when, when animals pretend to be other animals. And that happens in snakes, too. I have a healthy respect of snakes. We only have one here, but if I see a snake in the wild, I probably just tip my hat to it and let it be. Oh, that's a redeem for a hydrate, and they don't have any water. I promise I'll go get water on my next break, and then I'll, I'll have a hydrate. I apologize. I'm too excited about snakes. God, it's almost been two hours. We've just been talking about reptiles. How it goes sometimes. <laughs> Uh, but there are, so there's a, a thing called a coral snake. Looks like this. And they're very, very venomous. Very dangerous. Never, ever go near a coral snake. However, there are um, these kinds of milk snakes, which you can have as a pet and stuff like that. And as it turns out, they look a lot like coral snakes. These are, the Honduran ones are, are black and um, red generally, but there's also like, I think maybe it's Sonoran? has the yellow too yeah so you can see if if you were a person who didn't know a lot about snakes that looks a lot like that and that's on purpose these um snakes milk snakes are not venomous but they like to pretend to be because then other animals will leave them alone 
If red touches yellow, you're a dead fellow. If red touches black, you're okay, Jack. I have heard that before. I don't know if that's a thing that's, like, always true. And also, like, if you're in a situation where you're like, I'm not sure about this, and this may or may not be true, just don't touch the snake. Um, if red touches black, you're okay. That, that's true. The, 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 the yellow and the red doesn't touch on these ones. Although, there's other kinds of milk snakes, too, and I don't know across the board if what it is, so... God only knows. I did, that is a cute little run, though. <laughs> They're very cute snakes. I don't know what other kind of... There's, like... There's another one. Sinaloan, maybe. They're so cute. We used to have that. They're so friggin' pretty. I think it was for distinguishing corn snakes from rising ones. I, I think it was that that's actually specifically for coral snakes. Um, because corn snakes in the wild are not, they're not red, black, and yellow. Corn snakes, that's a good segue into a thing I meant to talk about a while ago and didn't get to it. But, um, corn snakes are, them and ball pythons are probably the most common, um, snake in the pet trade. And in the wild, they're, like, kind of dark orangish red in the wild gotten the point of breeding them where it's all over the place they're like yeah this is what they look like in the wild that's what they look like but corn snakes and ball pythons are they're so common in the pet trade because they're fairly easy to take care of and so on and so forth that um we have bred them to be so many different colors look at that look at that You can have ones that are like white and brown and gray and orange and pink. It's all over the place. I really like the ones that are pink. pink. There's names for all these marks and stuff. I don't know what they are. I also like the gray ones. It's it's this fascinating thing because the pet trade is so uh it's so lucrative. They're so cute. It's the unfortunate thing, though, with, with breeding and why I'm kind of mm, about reptile breeding, um, is that what happens with... So this happened... I'll show, I'll show you what a ball python looks like, too. What happens is be, because of the breeding um, and because people are trying to make money for it. So this is another common one because they only get to be like five feet or so and they're they're pretty cool this is what they look like in the wild but you could, again can have like some really cool morphs but what happens is as soon as you start treating animals like a product the care for them automatically goes down so you have things like they're kept in containers that are really too small with like bare minimum in terms of like enrichment and stuff like that um because like oh they're fine and like snakes don't do much so they don't need stuff and um people will breed for certain morphs even if they develop like neurological issues because sometimes the way you get a new morph is by inbreeding and as you probably know inbreeding is a big problem because you get accumulation of um, problematic genes. You don't, you're not getting new genes and you're getting problematic genes. And so there's more likely to be various birth defects. The one I know about with ball pythons is there's one called a spider morph. So they're really pretty, you can see. Um, but I don't know if it's on here, but what happened with this one, yeah, is, um, the animals that were bred to have this morph would often have neurological problems and they would have something called a head wobble, which is basically what it sounds like in that when a snake was moving its head around, it would like wobble back and forth because it wasn't stable and that can cause serious problems with like feeding and stuff. Pet trade for any animal is a problem. Adopt and shop. I absolutely agree with that. All of my animals um, I got from my work <laughs> and they were all kind of like excess animals. I... There was a while where I was kind of on the fence about it. And even now, like, it's just sort of at a point where I'm like, I don't want to pay people for, like, I just don't want to indulge the pet trade any further. I will say, 
it's better to buy, generally, it's better to buy from a breeder than a pet store. Please never ever buy animals from a pet store, if you can. Just don't. They're really bad. They treat them really badly. They often don't know the proper care for them. And they don't take care of them well because they're there to make money. Uh, so that's one thing. But the problem is, like, I I know, I, I've met people before that were breeders. And they had, like, the best of intentions. Which is, like, they love the animals and they love doing it. But it's, like, you do have to consider your larger impact. Like, I another animal that there's like a ton of them in the pet trade is leopard geckos i have a couple leopard geckos because we had a, a ton at my work um they're, they're very cute you, you might have you might have seen this i have three leopard geckos um but they're so cute look at them they're another really common pet but again the same thing happens and there's so there's so many of them in the pet trade that we do not need to breed anymore we should stop breeding them and so, you, like, when people want to breed them, even if they have the best of intentions and they do it because they, like, they love the animals, it can be really hard because it's, like, are you considering the impact you're going to have? Because there's already so many geckos out there and ball pythons and um, corn snakes and stuff that, like, don't have homes or aren't getting adequate care. Or, like, a lot of things that happens with this, as I, I showed you before, the, like... So the, the wild type, ba wild type basically means just what they look like in the wild. So this is what corn snakes look like in the wild. Oh, thank you. Um, totes just Maddie for the follow. I apologize for being silly. My, my activity feed, I forgot I was going to do that. My activity feed is being dumb and won't show up for whatever reason. Maybe I could bring it up on my phone. Hello. Peace. Hello. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Totes just Maddie. And we're at 102 followers. Thank you so much. So, again, these are the wild type. These are the most, and with um, ball pythons, this is what they look like in the wild. And these are the most common you see in the pet trade. And because of that, they're devalued to the point where it's like, you might be able to get one of these for like, I don't know, like, depending on where you are, like 30 to 50 bucks. Whereas the the, the prettier ones can go for like thousands of dollars and that is just wild to me it's wild like what we're doing is we're literally putting a price on another creature's existence like that's i don't know how to feel about that not a big fan of that like i'm not i'm not saying i don't support like you know if you went to a shelter and you paid for the animal like i support that because it's like you're supporting the shelter but it's like if you're paying significantly more money for a snake that otherwise is very very similar to like this kind of snake that goes for like a tenth of the price like that's weird doesn't almost every domesticated animal have a commercial price oh absolutely they absolutely do and i i think the i think the way we treat animals as a whole in our society is a huge problem i think we should stop breeding animals as pets and livestock i think we should just stop <laughs> just stop no more also hi gaming expert are albino pythons harmful damaging morphs i remember holding this huge one as a kid i believe albino is actually one of the more common ones because it's one it's a um a phenotype which is like the, the the way they look and it has having to do with their genes that you actually see in the wild so it's more common i don't believe i don't know of any um like the, well the other problem too is like albino basically just means lacking pigment but it can come in like different types but i don't know of any like albino type morphs that have damn it like that are harmful it's just kind of a thing overall i feel like that it's very weird that we put more value on just we, like we just turn them into a product um apparently the dog my family had growing up was show quality we had the certificate and everything but my dad got her for free just because the owner didn't want to look after her anymore yeah that's that's fair i mean it's just more of a thing where it's like I, d I understand people wanting to have pets. Like, I have pets. I get it. But when what you're doing is you're contributing to the, like, 
Oh, hi, Warrior Girl. Good to see you. Um, when you're contributing to the, like putting more animals into the world when we don't need to put more any more animals into the world like us as humans i it's like it's questionable like even say you want a dog and you want a specific kind of dog i would maybe like to get a dog one day and i there's a specific size mostly that i want and stuff and that's okay but to be like i want this specific breed and i'm gonna go to a breeder that does this specific thing is like is it really that necessary and is it really going to exchange your experience of having a pet that much when you could go to like a shelter or like there's so many adoption places now that it's like do you need to be contributing to the like yes i'm gonna give money to the to the person who's breeding more dogs like ugh. my point is in another life someone would probably have bought her dog for hundreds of pounds meanwhile we got her for free yeah it's just exactly it's like exactly what you're saying it's just like again weird of like oh, this animal is worth so much more because of this arbitrary thing we've decided. It's weird. Anyway, this took a... This took a turn. Um, snakes! <laughs> I will say, I guess every time we talk about pets, I, I get into this little down with the pet trade thing. It's just hard. I was at yoga. Yeah, yeah. They go to yoga without me. Because I, I don't like doing yoga outside. Um... I'm, I hope you had fun at yoga. <sighs> so that was my, my little tirade. We can get back to snakes now. <sighs> Have one more thing to say. <laughs> the other, like... God, we're just going to talk about pets for a minute here. The other problem I think we have with the pet trade beyond just, like, we're seeing animals as products and stuff is that... A lot of the times, and this is this is kind of across the board with pets, but even more so with um, reptiles and like invertebrates and, and stuff that we don't understand as much, is they tend to get much worse care because they can tolerate it to a point and also we just don't place the same value on it. Like, mistreatment of a dog versus mistreatment of a snake like, pe most people would opt for the, like, oh, mistreatment of a dog is worse. Or because they don't like snakes, or because dogs are, like, like they're mammals and they're more closely related to us, so we, you know, bond to them better and stuff like that. So it's just kind of a thing. But it, it happens across the board where we often treat animals the way we feel like treating them that where it doesn't inconvenience us and often even when we're trying to do right by animals like this happens with dogs i know where it's like just because you love a dog that's not like enough you need to give it the proper care that it actually needs um including like getting getting it trained and stuff like that and that's a thing that i know not everybody agrees on but It's just, I don't, I don't like the way that we treat animals for our own convenience and gain. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. Anyway, I'm going to take another break really quick because I have to pee and also I really need to get some water because my throat is getting dry. And then we'll talk some more about snakes probably for a little bit and then we'll talk about lizards and then we'll probably end it there. All right. I'll be right back. Actually, I'm going to see really quick if I can get my um my uh music to work before I go. I'm going to again I'm going to get water, I promise. I will get the water. I I'm going to be here for a second. I'm going to put my BRB screen on real quick and then see if I can get the music to go. Give me one second. I'm still here. I'm still here. Wait, is this going to go? Oh, now it wants to go. Okay. I'll be right back.
I'm back. I got water. <sighs> now make sure you guys are drinking water too. Very important. Have a sip. Okay. Mm. I'm sure there's more things I could think of to think about snakes, but I think we'll move on. That was a noise. To lizards for the last bit. There's just too many things to talk about. I gotta close all my tabs. We're gonna keep this one open. Because it's a lizard. Oh my god, another hydrate. Thank you, bunny. Appreciate it. Um, losing my mind. Lizards. Here we go. A five, six, seven, eight. Feels weird when I can't hear anything. Okay. That's the wrong headphones, what that is. All right. Five, six, seven, eight. Lizards. So lizards, um, out of all of the groups, lizards and snakes are one of the most closely related because they're both squamata. But lizards, a lot of the time, have legs. They don't always have legs, but a lot of the time they have legs. There's a lot of different kinds of lizards. They're probably one of the most widespread groups. Um, and they come in lots of different shapes and sizes. They eat lots of different things. There are really big ones and really small ones. <laughs> oh god, where to even start with lizards? Okay, let's start let's start small. How about that? So there's lots of different groups of lizards. Um, for example, like one of the smaller ones and the, the, the kind of um the one kind of lizard we have here is called a five line skink. And skinks are generally on the smaller side. Um they're generally these lizards that don't have necks. <laughs> Not true necks. So this is a five-line skink, which is pretty cool. Um, five-line skinks, as you might imagine, they have five lines on their back. We're not very original in naming stuff. And when they're young, when they're juveniles, they have a bright blue tail, which you can see in various pictures here. And they, like a lot of lizards, um, one of their defense, defense mechanisms is they can actually drop their tail. Um, like, basically, I believe what happens is if they feel really, really, um, threatened, they squeeze all of the muscles at the base of their tail, cutting off all of the blood flow, and then the tail pops off. I don't exactly know how the popping off happens. Not gonna lie. And the tail will flail around, distracting the predator, and then the lizard can get away. And so this can be done, there's quite a few lizards that do, do this, and this can be done in a couple different ways. So skinks, um, five-line skinks specifically, I think there's other skinks that do this too. They drop it and they can regrow their tail. I'm not sure if they can drop it multiple times. It's possible, but it takes them a while to regrow it. I don't know if it's a one and done thing like the way it is with some lizards. Um, whereas some other lizards like the lovely and talented leopard geckos, so they, let's see if we can find a good picture of this. This is probably a good picture. So their tails, it might be a little hard to see in here, but they're kind of segmented. So like you can see here, like they have these little like rings. It kind of looks like there's a bunch of elastic bands <laughs> over their tail. And, oh my God, two headed, my God. Anyways, um, but they like, they can lose bits of their tail or their whole tail. So they can kind of lose it anywhere that these little um squeezes in are. And that means that they can um, lose their tail multiple times and they can regrow it. But the thing is that, so if they lose like down here, you can't see my mouse, right? You can. They can regrow that, but they can't lose it right there again. They'd have to lose it further up because they can't regrow the bone that's in the tail. So they can lose it multiple times, but if they just drop the whole thing, they'll regrow it, but they cannot drop it anymore. Um. And leopard gecko, I'll show you what regrown tails look like. They're usually shorter and fatter. Oh, yeah. So you can see this is like, they drop the whole tail, so they're usually pretty short and fat, and they're smooth. Um, they don't have the bumps, and, they, and this is um, 
a partially regrown tail. So they do store extra fat and stuff in their tail. Um, so like with, with these geckos and um, some other geckos, like well, there's one that's called a fat tail gecko and they look very, very similar. Um, a, a good thick tail is a sign of a healthy gecko. Yeah, African fat tail gecko. Uh, you want a good chunky tail on them. A thin tail is not a good thing in lover geckos, fat tail geckos, and similar things. You want them nice and chunky. <sighs> Excuse me. Because that's where they store the excess fat, but it can be a problem for them um, because if they lose their tail, they're losing all of that stored fat, so suddenly they don't have that extra fat deposit. None of my geckos have lost their tails, Duckwood, except one of them before I got her, and well, she lost like a little bit her, of her tail, like the very end of it. I don't know what happened with that, but none of them have lost their tails with me, thankfully. Like she, like this part, she lost like here and regrew it. Um, yeah, but again, none of mine have ever lost their tails under my care, thank God. Um, they would be okay if they did, but it's just, like, better. It, it means they were very, very stressed if that does happen. And even when my one leopard gecko escaped for, like, ten hours, she was fine. She didn't lose her tail. So I guess her adventure must not have been that stressful. Which is good. Um, because it was very worrying. Very, very worrying when you have an animal that gets out. So then, these are all kind of common pet trade animals, because they're the ones I know the most about. There's also crested geckos, which I have a crested gecko also. Her name's Tofu. And one, un unrelated to what I want to talk about, but crested geckos don't have eyelids. Most lizards have eyelids. Snakes do not have eyelids. Some lizards, like the crested gecko, don't have eyelids, and so they lick their eyeballs like little, little gremlins. Look at that gremlin. They're so cute, but they're so weird. Like, look at this. Because you're like, oh, look, it's so cute. And then you're like, that's a bit of a nightmare. They're very cute, though. And so they have um, these long, kind of thinner tails. And they can also lose their tails, but it's kind of a one and done thing. When they lose their tail, that's that's it. No more tail. Me back, the sun started to be too strong. That's fair. I personally don't like being in the sun too long. I get too hot and I'm very sweaty girl, so it's just a gross, gross thing. We're talking about lizards! Yeah, so these are the these are the two kinds I have. These two right here. They're both geckos. Um, and another interesting thing in like divisions of of lizards and stuff like that, and this is specifically we're talking about geckos, is some geckos um can climb because they have the sticky pads on their toes, which are by the way they're not actually sticky. They just have um a bunch of little little tiny hairs called setae on them. And then there's something about van der Waal forces that help them stick. I honestly don't know that much about it. I just know that they're not, like, sticky in the way we think of sticky. Look at that! Look at that! That's what their toes look like. If you ever wondered. They also have claws. But, um, leopard geckos don't... Oops, nope, nope. I don't want that. Leopard geckos don't have the sticky toes. They do have little claws. So they're decent little climbers. But they can't climb walls the way crested geckos can, which are also why crested geckos are a little scarier to deal with. They're very quick, and they can climb, and uh, that can be very annoying. Once upon a time, my crested gecko got behind my bookshelf for a little bit, and that was very scary. I got her out, and she was fine. But it can be a bit of a thing. So that's kind of um, two groups we've looked at. So their skinks are one group. Geckos are another group. Um, another group that's really cool, and I, I'm a big fan of, even though I will never ever have one. My mom calls her hiking boots or gecko toes because they grip nicely. Good for her. Um, another kind of very cool... God, there's so many. We're, we're going to look at a couple. We're not going to look at all of them because we probably won't have time. But monitor lizards are super cool. Yeah, I wanted to look at chameleons and maybe iguanas also. Let's put this over here. Turtles. That's a, that's a lizard. Um, monitor lizards are the big lizards. Um, except for iguanas. Iguanas are also big, but they're not modern lizards. All, I believe all, carn like, big, big carnivorous lizards are, um, monitor lizards. So the, the one that people know the most is Komodo dragons, which are the biggest lizard, and they're gigantic. 
um, those are a kind of monitor lizard. And there's, I bet, they're, they're usually like um, at least several feet long and they can get, I don't even know how big Komodo dragons are. How big is a Komodo dragon? How long are Komodo? Komodo dragons are scary. <laughs> Komodo dragons are venomous and uh, just stay away from them. So they get to be um, a little over two meters. I don't know what that is in feet. I knew at some point. I think two meters is like six feet. Hold on. Meters to feet. Yeah, so, okay, six and a half feet is two meters. So, like, 2.3 is seven and a half meters to eight, seven and a half to eight and a half meters. So, they're like a foot or two longer than, like, probably the tallest person you know. That's big. And they're, they're the biggest one. There are other, um, whoops, monitor lizards that don't get quite that big, but they're still quite big. Like, usually they can be the size of, like, small dogs. Um, there's very fun pictures of them. God, look at this man. <laughs> They're very fun. I, um, at work we had, I wonder if there's a picture in here. At work we had a black roughneck monitor. This is what they look like. Look at her. Beautiful. They're big. They're like, uh, this big, maybe? This is how big their, their body is, if that makes sense. Any six. And then they have a big tail. Cramoto <laughs> dragons. Um, and they're arboreal, so they're pretty good climbers. You can see how they have some pretty big, wicked claws. You don't want to be on the other end of those claws. Um, yeah, they're pretty cool. They eat, like, and they'll eat bugs. They like to eat fish. They'll eat rodents. They'll eat a lot of stuff. I had her, um, the one at my work. I had gloves on when this was happening, because we sometimes had to pick her up. She was in an enclosure with a door. Um... And sometimes she decided it was time to come out and you had to like pick her up like gently and like sort of put her back in, which she didn't really like, but she was pretty tolerant of. Not all animals are tolerant and when they have wicked claws and, uh, you know, teeth and tails, then you got to be careful. <laughs> but she was, she was pretty chill. She, she was pretty old also, but she loved food. It was a good time. Uh, another one we had for a little bit. Which I also think is very cool. We had a savannah monitor for a bit. And they're bulkier. They're bulky. They look at him. Look at this man. Look at that. They're so cute. But it's like having a dog. Or a, a dog that doesn't understand affection as much. <laughs> they're so cute though. They also have a fork tongue, just like a a, a snake does i didn't talk about this but snakes um as you probably know have forked tongues and they they do use them to to smell that's the actual what they're doing because they flick it out they um get the the smell particles on their tail and then they put it through two holes in the roof of their mouth um into the jacobson's organ and that sends the single signals to their brain that tell them tells them what's what and because they have the two sides of you can see like they have the the fork it means they can smell directionally like we can hear directionally we can hear where something's coming from they can smell where something's coming from whereas we when we smell something it's kind of just a general thing we don't always know where it's coming from um <laughs> baby okay <sighs> oh god it's happening again i can't see anything i my activity feed continues to be on that was sam thank you for the follow Thank you for coming and hanging out. I appreciate it. We're looking at lizards for the last, like, we got like 15 minutes or so yet. Aw, oh, thank you for the host, Sam. I appreciate that. It's gonna be a short host, but it's okay. Um, another group, another another group is chameleons, which you probably uh, know more about than other groups of reptiles because chameleons have a couple really wild uh, adaptations. For one thing, they um, can change color. That's like their, the, the thing they're most famous for. The Council of Sam's grows in power. Oh God, there's already several Sam's in this community. Yeah, another couple, um, <laughs> another couple really cool things about 
chameleons, as you may also know, or you may not know, that their eyes can move independently of each other, which is super cool, which means they can be looking, uh, like, but most times when you have binocular vision, so you have two eyes, is it's looking in, like, the same direction, um, and even, I think, when animals tend to have eyes on the side of their head, usually they kind of move the same way, like, looking forward, looking at the side, looking back, but chameleon eyes just be all over the place. And they also have the silliest little hands. They have, like, you can see it here. Damn, we're both, you're both Sam. God damn. We're really out here, huh? I think a human error is, is a Sam. We have another Sam, but he's not here right now. So you're, you know. The third Sam in the community, the second Sam in chat, presently. But they have really silly, like, they have, like, two toes. And they kind of just do this. And it's hilarious. And they also have really wickedly long tongues that they shoot out to grab food. What an animal. What an, a life. Like this. You can kind of see they fling it out. YouTube. Chameleon. <laughs> Yeah, slow motion. God, it's wild. Like, it just, like, God, th this one back here really got me. That! Blah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. I hate it. It's cool, but I hate it. Wicked amazing, yeah. I just touched my glasses and got stuff all over them. Glasses problems. Okay, okay. There we go. All good. And another one, another group um, we could talk about. It's a nope from me. That's fair. That's understandable. At least you're not a bug. Um, is iguanas. So iguanas are another group of really big uh, lizards, but they're all herbivores so far as I know. Good evening. Hi, Selkie. Good to see you. You're just here for like the last little bit. We're just talking about lizards. At least you're not a bug. Listen. Bugs have it rough. I don't know. We, I don't know how many of you have been here for me talking about how messed up insects are. Oh my god, it's a nightmare. Just be thankful you're not an insect. I just wanted to drop a follow and lurk. I'm gonna go sleep for a trillion hours, so I'll catch you later. No problem. I'm glad you're getting to sleep since you know you didn't sleep all night, you fool. Bye, Sam. Thank you for coming. Uh, so there's a couple different kinds of iguanas. The, the one I feel like is most common in the pet trade, probably, and um, probably people that know the most about is the green iguana, but there are other ones. I believe green iguanas are also the ones that have become invasive. One of them has become invasive. Yeah, they're an invasive species in Florida. God. Florida has it rough, let me tell you. Florida has, this is something I want to talk about a little bit, maybe we'll talk about it for the last little bit. This is a whole other stream I wanted to do at some point, but is talking about invasive species, because that's a whole thing. Could talk about that for a whole thing. But um, Florida, I believe it's green iguanas and maybe Burmese pythons, or maybe it's retics, I don't know. There's some kind of really large python that's invasive in Florida. Yeah, it's and because with that the problem is these are both large animals and they don't have any natural predators in florida and florida is really warm and so that's a really good place for reptiles to be so you know green iguanas and burmese pythons it's likely that um what happened was people had them as pets and just released them into the wild because people sometimes do that um which please don't ever do that and then they ended up flourishing. Um, and two, thing, two things with that, really quick. One aside is animals, especially animals that have been raised as pets or even animals that have been taken from the wild for whatever reason, a lot of the time they can't go back to the wild. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is because you can't release animals like wherever you want. Don't release your pets, they will not survive. Well, here's the, here's the funny thing, right? Is 
That is true with a lot of animals, dogs and cats and stuff like that. And like a lot of mammals particularly. With reptiles, it's a little bit different because they don't become as reliant on us because they don't have like their their brains don't work that way. Pe like reptiles can get used to people, but they never like learn the way other animals do that like oh people mean food it doesn't it doesn't work like that so reptiles generally do better when released to the wild but you can't release an animal wherever you want even if it's literally like an animal was taken from um like this city and you want to put it back there you can't you you can't let it go just wherever and there's um like i believe here we had a thing like with um, the turtle hospital and stuff when they release turtles. It has to be within a hundred meters of where it was found, which is not a big area. And it's because as like once you start introducing animals into ecosystems that are, if they're not their native ecosystem, you're changing that ecosystem. Not to mention, um, well, and, and one other big thing with that is, can you release rats in the wild? Do not release rats in the wild. Absolutely not. But if you, like, if you took an animal from somewhere and then are putting it back, that can be a thing of, like, unless you're putting it back in the exact same spot, that can cause problems. Um, not to mention, you don't know what kind of bacteria or stuff it may have picked up while it was with you. So that's a problem, too. But even more so is when people, like, get animals from the pet trade and then let them go. Because even if honestly especially if they are um an animal that is native to that area you might be releasing an animal that you don't know what kind of disease it might have you don't or like bacteria or stuff like that and you're suddenly introducing a whole new set of genetics into that pool which is not a good thing for us to be doing we should not be messing with ecosystems as much as we can um but the, the thing that kind of sucks, but it, it is kind of good in a way, is like, here in Canada, reptiles hibernate through the winter, because that's the only way they survive the winter. And if an animal is released here that doesn't hibernate, it, it will die. Which is awful, but it is better than that creature becoming established in a place where it is not native to you and it doesn't belong and becoming an invasive species. So if a Bernie, Burmese python was released here, it would die. But if a Burmese python was released in Florida, which I'm sure they have been, um, because it's warm all year round and again, they don't have any native predators, they, they just flourish and they breed and they become a huge problem because all of a sudden they are, um, like, having an impact on ecosystems. They are, um, let me think of an example. It's like, if you release, if you release a Burmese python into the wild and it breeds, all of a sudden there's another predator. So if something was already at, at risk, like, say, a, a certain kind of, like, rodent or whatever, and Burmese pythons eat them, all of a sudden there's even less of those, and it just shifts the entire ecosystem, which is a problem. Because when one animal takes over because there's no competition and there's no predators, that that lowers the, the biodiversity, which I think we've talked about before, is like more biodiversity, so more species in the area means a healthier ecosystem. Baby alligators the people abandoned in New York zoos. I've never heard that to be true. I wonder if someone's actually done that. Anyway, but green iguanas and Burmese pythons are both animals that can be kept as pets in various places, and likely they were released into the wild in um, Florida, and that is why there is suddenly a bunch of them now, and they're a huge problem, and people have to go on hunts and stuff for them because we're trying to undo our own mistakes. We're ruining the environment. Yeah, that's probably, uh, maybe I'll do that topic next week, because, um, we're almost out of time. I might stay a little bit longer if y'all want to talk more about lizards! Ah, lizards! Okay.
<laughs> I've never been wrong in my life. Okay. That's, I, you know, that's an attitude to have that's maybe not the best one. Lizards. Um, what are other... We covered, we talked a little bit about skinks. Talked a little bit about geckos. Oh, what is... Oh, what are they called? Uh, what the, what is the, what is the group that bearded dragons are in? Lizards. Uh, iguana, like iguanas? Chameleons I made it. No, that's not what I wanted. Let me, let me add this. Hold on. I'm gonna get my book out again. Poppy on stream? Not unless somebody redeems it. That's a salamander. That is not a lizard. Thank you. Good try. Good, good, good attempt. Uh, we could look more at geckos, because, God, there's a lot of geckos. Ooh, we didn't talk about these ones. Hang on. This one. This is a cool family. This has some, some really spicy, some really spicy boys in it. Uh, you know, it's fine. We'll just look at this. So, um... This is in the family Agamide. So this is you you've probably seen this one in like various media and stuff. Oh we're oh we're really we're we're <laughs> Okay, Poppy on stream. Alright. I will be right back. I have to I'm gonna go get Miss Poppy Pants since she is popular. Poppy popular. And I will be right back with a leopard gecko. Hang tight. back but i'm actually gonna switch to the chatting screen so you can get a closer look welcome i'm back and i have a friend i'm gonna put one put this back here for you a teeny tiny itty bitty friend hi kiddo i know i disrupted your nap i'm sorry this is poppy get her nice and close to the screen down a little bit and brightness and I'll put it down here so you can see her. There she is. She doesn't want to look at the camera because she's a celebrity. This is Poppy. Poppy is a leopard gecko. Her name is Poppy because she looks like she's covered in poppy seeds and I name all of my geckos food related things. Can you look at the camera? There you go. There she is. <laughs> she's pretty tolerant of being handled i love poppy i want to protect she is the sweetest she is not that i have a favorite child but if i had a favorite child it would be poppy does she like her face being massaged like watson she doesn't and i think she would get really mad at me if i did that to her 
You're very cute, you know that? He's a little angel. She's just very chill. My other geckos like to run around when I'm trying to hold them. Yeah. You can see her little tail. She has a little... She has her whole tail. But she has like a little kink at the end. It's funny. Oh. She's a model elegant. She is. She also bit me yesterday. But like that was fair because I was feeding her. Uh, where are you going? Last time I brought you, I just flopped down on my hand because it was warm. But today you're not doing that. Whole tail. Yeah. Yeah, she's a bit of a funky girl. So she has um, what's called MBD, which is met metabolic bone disease. And it's a thing that can happen um, in reptiles when they don't get enough calcium in their diet. It's, it can happen especially with um, lizards because often you need to supplement them with calcium. So I put on the bugs. And when she, like in her first year of life before I had her, I don't think she got enough calcium or other vitamins. So she has, her legs are kind of bowed in and she is a little funky. Like, I think she might have some mild neurological problems. Her her balance isn't wonderful, and she just does weird things that geckos don't usually do. But she's an angel, she's a really good eater, and I love her. Got weak bones. Lizard ain't got enough milk. Do not give your lizards milk. Where are you going? Yeah, you're very cute. Too late. I'm trying to make this not too bright for her. I love her to bits and pieces. Oh, she says I'm going to leave now. Oh, she licked me. I'm blessed. Truly blessed. Leopard geckos are funny because them and some other animals too, they just like, part of the way they explore the world is they just lick stuff. Can we hold? Yeah, you can hold her if you want to like come over and hang out for a little bit. Oh, there's I'm gonna come over. <laughs> come hold her. Baby. Oh, there we go. Now she's happy. It's funny because, like, you can maybe kind of see right now, she's kind of flopped down. Usually they, they prop themselves up on their legs to walk around, but she's decided my hand is nice and warm, and she has flopped down. So she can put her belly on it and absorb some of my heat. Yeah. One of the things you do when you're setting up a reptile, um enclosure is again because they're ectotherms you have to set it up so there's a heat gradient so it's warmer on one side do geckos enjoy scratches or pats or would that harm them um they don't it, it kind of like they don't like it they don't really like being touched they kind of sometimes don't even tolerate being handled um my geckos are pretty used to being held and so they're they're pretty tolerant usually with reptiles you can tell um, if they're moving a whole lot and they're moving at a quick pace, it usually means they're more stressed because they don't feel safe. Um, like she'll move around until she finds a comfy spot and then she'll stay there. But yeah, they do. Do they enjoy being serenaded? I don't think so. Yeah. Again, they don't really, they kind of tolerate us. They don't really care about us. Oh my God, you're raiding. Oh, thank you so well, yes, for the raid party. You're just in time for Gecko. Perfect timing for the raid. <laughs> Here she is. The real celebrity, the real star of this channel. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome. How did your stream go? Did you have a good stream? Also, you're just in time to see Poppy. This is my, my pride and joy, my little angel girl. She's a, a sweet, precious baby. Here she is. <laughs> yeah, look at the camera. She always looks like she's smiling, as geckos do. It's very good. Thought you'd appreciate this stream. <laughs> Are you into reptiles? Because that's what we've been talking about today. Yay, Ray, thank you. Oh, Poppy's not nearly as excited about the raid as I am. I'm just saying. She's too, she's too good for all of us, frankly. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about lizards for the last little bit. I went really well, thank you. You've been loving stream recently. That's so good to hear. I'm glad. If this is a regular guest I'm following. Yeah, I have... um. I have six reptiles. I have four lizards and two snakes. And one of my, uh, you know, channel point rewards is to bring out a reptile of your choice. The last two times it's been Poppy. Because <laughs> you're a very good girl. Yes, you are. And I love her. She's also so... Oh, God. Please be careful. 
She is not the most, uh, she's usually pretty good about, like, staying on the hands and not just, like, deciding to walk off, but every once in a while she, she goes, I'll sim so hard next stream. Yes, girl. Yeah. Um, so I do, on Mondays, I do a little mental health podcast, and on Wednesdays, I do Wildlife Wednesday, which is talking about animals and such. I'm gonna put this back up here. There it is. Baby girl. Baby, baby girl. I'm glad I got to see Poppy. Have to jump over to my own stream now, sadly. Hope you have a great night stream. No problem. Have a great day. I am going to hang out for a bit longer, I think, to hang out with the new people. And then maybe we'll go right Messenger. Because she's also wonderful. Yeah, I loved all the information today. Thanks so much. No problem. Yeah, for anybody who just joined. So today was, I did like Reptile 101. Which is basically, we talked about um, the different groups of reptiles. We just sort of stopped now. So you could, we could all enjoy the presence of Miss Poppy. Here she is. Yeah, she's, you see, like, when reptiles stop moving, when you're holding them, it, it usually means they're, they're kind of like, they're good. They're chill. Um, I'm just hanging out. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm nice and warm. I know. If they're running around, it means they're not comfortable or, and you need to either hold them differently or they're just not used to being handled yet. Yeah, so I have, I have three leopard geckos. Um, I have Poppy and Peach and Cashew, and they're all different colors, which is cool. Uh, Peach is a very good girl. Cashew is, doesn't like me very much, but that's okay. <laughs> I like her. Um, and then I have a crested gecko who is still a baby. She's not even a year old yet. Um, her name's Tofu. She's real fast, so I don't tend to, to take her out for long periods of time. Because she's still getting used to being handled, and she's quite quick. And I, all of my geckos, if they're too stressed out, they will drop their tails, and I really don't want them to do that. So we just do little ones. <laughs> my cousin lets me sit with her bearded dragon when I visit. He's called Dave, and he just sits on my head. That's awesome. Bearded dragons are really cool. We used to have one um, at the place I worked, which is also where I got all my reptiles. Actually, I guess I'll turn this back down so you can have the good light. There you go. Um, and we had a bearded dragon, and I used to make hats for him. <laughs> And he was just so tolerant. It was very nice. Um, and then I have I have a really small snake because he's like two years old. And then I have uh, a very big snake who likes to bite me every time I go to take him out, which is fun. He did that last time I, I took him out. Uh, so I usually wear gloves when I'm holding him because he's a twit. But he just gets really excited about food, which we can all relate to, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I usually like don't keep them out very long but if they seem okay oh so sorry I, I missed i missed some follows thank you so much liz and killian for the follow welcome welcome we're having a good time poppy i'm sorry you don't like it when i touch you yeah <laughs> my days i love that yeah i have pictures somewhere maybe i'll i have a, a discord i might maybe i'll put them in the discord later i made because i'm in canada i'm in ontario i made him a little blue jays hat and it was so freaking cute <laughs> Back in the day, yeah. I will say, yeah, she has a snake too, told me to be careful because they have fangs at the back of their throat. It really, I mean, it depends on the kind of snake. So I have um, a hognose snake and he is, he does, it, he is rear fanged. So here, I'm gonna, do. I'll just hold you, but actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna put her away and we can talk a little bit about that. Um, we were talking about fangs and stuff earlier, so pretty much, like, all snakes people have as pets, well, most pe snakes people have as pets, because some people do keep venomous snakes, which are the ones that, um, can inject you with venom and you should never, ever hold, um, but I, here, we're gonna go back here, we were talking about frilled lizards, but we're gonna stop that, we're gonna talk about hognose. <laughs> uh, rear... So this is the kind of snake that I have. I have a Western hognose. And they, so they do actually have fangs in like the back and they are arguably venomous, um, but their venom is so mild and because they're rear fanged, it's really hard to even get the venom. So it's not so much a thing. None of these are good pictures, but hognoses are um, cool because they're specialized particularly to eat stuff like toads. Um, so you can see hognose, they're called that because they have this little, like, upturned nose that kind of looks like a shovel or something. And they use that to dig in the dirt to find um, 
amphibians, so particularly frogs, toads, salamanders and stuff, and they have the rear fangs so they can actually, um, they're actually able to kind of like pop toads because toads like to puff up when they're scared um, and that enables them to eat them, which is pretty freaking neat. I have been bit. Uh, if they're tiny, that might be the two she has. Yeah, just wrapped around my fingers. They're really cute. I have been bitten by a couple of hognose snakes and it can be a thing where um, it can make your like your fingers swell up, your hands swell up. It's never that serious in my, that, I, that I've heard of anyways. But I've never had it happen. I've been bitten like three or four times by hog noses, but like I, I don't think a lot of the time they they can even get enough of your hand or whatever in in their mouth for you to even get to the rear fangs. Um, yeah, in terms of snake bites, I we can talk about snake bites for a little bit. So I've been bitten by a lot of snakes in my life. Snake bites are really not that bad because as we have talked about before. Um, so w when people think snakes, they often think fangs. So sna snakes that are venomous have fangs because they need a way to deliver the toxin into, um, their prey or whatever. But most snakes, I believe, are, are not venomous and so they don't actually have fangs. Like, this is a garter snake and garter snakes have teeth, just like all, like, maybe not all snakes, but most snakes do, but they're really, really tiny. Like... Even this, like those, that that's a that's a pretty big snake, and usually they're way smaller than that. So they're like when you get bitten, it's like a bunch of little pinpricks, and it doesn't feel nice, but it doesn't really hurt that much. I've also been bitten by turtles, way worse, <laughs> way worse than a snake bite. Um, I was talking about earlier. I have a scar on one of my fingers. It's you can't see it on camera, but I have a scar on my one of my fingers from being bit by a turtle. But I've been bit on the hands a lot. I've also been bitten right on the mouth by a snake and there's nothing. That's a fun story. Story time. Here's a fun fact. So we were talking, um, if you guys were here earlier, we were talking about ball pythons. So ball pythons, turtles are secretly more menacing. If a snake bite has a two piece holds its fan. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't find it before. Like they're uh, non-venomous snake bite. I, I, it's not really, there aren't really good pictures of this. Like, honestly, when you get bitten by a snake, like a non-venomous snake, one, it does like bleed a little bit, but once the blood goes away, honestly, sometimes you can't even see the freaking holes. This is literally what it looks like. Oh, non-poisonous, gross. <laughs> Just a, a quick thing, since again, we have some new people here. And so when we're dealing with toxin, which is, um... The stuff that makes you really sick that animals produce. There's there's poisonous, which is when oh sorry I got a message. There's poisonous, which is basically something that if you eat it, um, or you bit it, you would get the the toxin in your mouth and you would ingest it and it would make you really sick. Whereas there's also venomous, which is what snakes are, which is where they inject venom into you. So I just I just like to differentiate those two things because they are different. And this is this is not right because in general there's no poisonous snakes there may actually be a poisonous snake as in if you ate it you would get really sick but generally when we're talking about snakes we're talking about venomous snakes to be clear on that um but this is like basically when you get by bit by a snake this is what the wounds look like it's literally just like a bunch of little little pinpricks it's really not a big thing um and again, I got bit right here one time by a ball python, which are snakes that are like five feet long. There are poisonous frogs. You're right. Hi, Tivius. Hi. I like never see you in stream. It was so nice to see you. There are poisonous frogs. Toads are poisonous. Um, toads are a little bit different than frogs just because they're usually more terrestrial. They spend more time on land. Um, and part I think that's part of the reason that they tend to have poison in their skin to defend themselves. Uh, but I got bitten by one of these bad boys, right on the face, Toad from Mario. Toad from Mario, absolutely poisonous, 100%. Um, but that story was basically at the place I used to work, we had quite a few ball pythons and we wanted to use more of them uh, for like the public to hold. So we were holding the ones that tended to be a little more like 
it might bite people, because, like, honestly, better for them to bite the staff than another per like a, a public person really because like it's, it's not such a big deal but it's a bigger deal if it bites a kid so we were holding them and i had this one snake out his name was zeus he was very pretty but i had him around my neck because that's just like a, a, a common thing we do with snakes that are climbing snakes and can hold on to you and i was doing computer work i was just hanging out with him we were vibing like i had him out for like 10 or 15 minutes and he was totally fine and then all of a sudden he was like it's he was like nosing around like here and i was like okay that's annoying stop and then all of a sudden he had grabbed onto my mouth and he wouldn't let go so quick aside is that um snakes bite like so they have two kinds of bites just like other animals they either bite out of defense or for food if they bite you if it's a defensive bite it's they grab you and let go. Those ones really don't hurt. The ones that hurt more are when they grab onto you and do not let go of you. Um, that's a feeding bite because that's what they do when they're eating is they grab onto something and they're not letting go. Uh, so that's what it did. It grabbed onto my face fully and it wouldn't let go. And it was a whole thing to get it off. It was a, There was a lot of blood. It hurt, but it was a cool story. So I heard a lady had a story and every morning she woke and it was laying straight out beside her. She asked someone about it. I think a vet and he said it was measuring to see... It was long enough to eat her. That's a who. I, I love this story because um, I have heard that story in my life so many times from so many people. And here here's the thing about that, right? So the story goes usually, yeah, this lady had a snake and she would sleep with the snake, which, A, don't sleep with your snake. You could very easily crush it or it will probably go somewhere and get lost and you'll never find it again step one just don't do that bad idea um and it would always like lay out fully stretched out beside her apparently and then like liz is saying she apparently went to the vet and it was like oh you need to stop like you need to get rid of the snake because the snake is measuring to eat you okay but let's let's logic through this a little bit okay i'm gonna i'm gonna switch over to this while we talk about this so you can really really get in my eyes but let's think about this you're a snake in the wild you're like a little snake you're, you there's a mouse you want to eat do you think that a mouse is going to let a snake come up to it and measure if it's going to fit in its stomach before it bites it are there any animals that measure if something is going to fit in their mouth before they eat it Snakes are funny, actually, because there's quite a few. It seems to be in some species more than others, but snakes often um, test if things are food with their mouth by, like, being like, ah, it's my, probably food. Because what happens, so, to be clear, <laughs> maybe it loved her, but it was super hungry. Well, here, here's the thing. I've choked before. I guess it's I often lay down beside my dinner. I measure everything I eat, of you know. I certainly don't measure it. It's caused amusing situations at dinner. Yeah. So animals in general just don't measure their food. That's just not a thing. So that's that's not a real story. It's a fun, like, people love telling that story, but it's not a real thing. We, just in general, across the board, we are not snake food. We do not smell like food to them. And, like, and you might may, may have even heard stories about people getting eaten by snakes and if that happens it's a very very rare thing because even for the biggest snakes our shoulders are so wide that it is it, it would be hard for them to get it all down so and again we're just not normal like the normal um you know food for snake. we're not we're not snake food We're not, we're not snake food. That's just step one. It would, and it would take a huge snake to even eat a person anyways. But there's at least one other person who can't. So. God, <laughs> talking about hot dogs. Um, but snakes, like in the wild too, it's, you know, you have to, if you're a predator, it, it pays to grab and bite first and ask questions later. Snakes are notorious for biting things that are too big for them to eat. Like, I, so I have a, a California king snake who is 
ridiculously, he's really, he always wants food. If you move your hand around too much and he hasn't eaten in a bit, he's like, that's food. That's absolutely food. Because they're they're pretty sensitive to movement. Snakes don't have good eyesight, but they are sensitive to movement. They, they rely more on their sense of smell, which they use their tongue for. Um, if a snake tries to eat you, it tends to be because you're pissing it off. Honestly, if a snake bites you, it's probably because you're pissing it off. If a snake bites you and does not let go because it thinks you're food, it is probably because you have been touching something that smells like food to them. Hydrate, thank you. Like, the, 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 my, my snake tends to, um, bite first and ask questions later. My, my big one. But my little snake is kind of, he's, he's mostly scared of me. But if I go in and my hands smell like, like I've been touching, um, mice, which is like, I, I get frozen pre-dead mice and that's what I feed to my snakes. Um, but if I've been touching that and then I go into his cage, he'll like, he'll come up and like, try to bite my fingers. So it is in when um i was working with snakes 90 percent of the time i think i got bit particularly by water snakes it's because it was when i was feeding them or i had been touching stuff that smelled like food so that's usually what it is if a snake bites you it's usually your fault to be fair that's how it is with with most animals because a lot of times um when when you get bitten by stuff it's because you were like poking it or you're too close to it or so on Sna i think snakes are adorable let's go back to looking at snakes snakey snakes um so we were we did talk about a little bit about let's we're gonna go back to talking about snakes we're gonna well we can come back to uh lizards later what are some other cool kinds of snakes there's um milk snakes smelly with their tongues absolutely milk snakes are also fairly common um Milk snakes belong to a group called king snakes, which is also what my kind of snake is. And they, along with eating, they'll eat like rodents and stuff. They also eat other snakes. So this is um, a thing where it's like generally with reptiles, with some exceptions, they're much better on their own than in an enclosure with another um, snake. But with milk snakes and other kinds of king snakes, it's even more of a thing where, like, you can't leave them together because one of them will probably eat the other one. So. Oh my goodness, more things happened and I have to look at my phone because my OBS says no. Oh, that was a, a, a Twitch Prime. Thank you, Anctavius, for the Twitch Prime. I literally think we're, like, one sub point away from emotes. I'm gonna look, actually. I must go get Snake Top. Peace out, Wad. Bye, Lance. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I'm going to look really quick because I'm interested, but because yesterday I checked and I was at 12 out of 15 sub points and I believe there's been two subs today, which means we're one away from one more emote slot and I'm, I'm working on designing emotes now. I promise. I promise. I, uh, I'll get there. I was, I've been slacking, but I'm, now I have to do it. <sighs> so, oh God. Eastern milk snakes, this is the kind of milk snake we have here. And one thing that's cool about them, and milk snakes in general are, we did talk about this a little bit earlier, but um, different kinds of milk snakes, they tend to mimic other snakes. So we have, there's like hunter and milk snakes and Sinaloan milk snakes and um, a bunch of different kinds of milk snakes that they'll actually, they'll, they mimic coral snakes, which are a very venomous kind of snake. Um... And I believe we, we were talking about this earlier. I can't remember what it, it there's like a rhyme about it where it's like red touches yellow, kill a fellow, red touches black, you're okay, Jack. I don't know if that's fully true. Please don't go around picking up snakes based on that rhyme. But coral snakes, very venomous. Um Milk snakes, not venomous, but they pretend to be venomous, so stuff will leave them alone. However, here, um so I live in Ontario, Canada. And we have eastern milk snakes here. And as you can tell, they're not red and black. And it's because we don't have coral snakes here. So mimicking a coral snake would not get you anywhere. So instead of mimicking um, a coral snake, eastern milk snakes actually mimic uh, rattlesnakes. So in Ontario, we have one kind of rattlesnake. It is called the Massasauga rattlesnake. I forgot to put the word rattlesnake, but it still brought it up. <laughs> So, Massasauga rattlesnakes are this 
thick as small. They're like maybe a foot long. Um, rattlesnake, they got thick bodies. They're, they're kind of gray or brown with splotches on them. And milk snakes, also kind of gray brown with splotches on them. And as you might imagine, rattlesnakes rattle their tails. And that is a um, part of a, a defense mechanism. And it's basically like, hey, I'm venomous. Get away from me or I'm going to bite you. That's what it's for. It's a warning system. And milk snakes can also rattle their tail. However, if you, uh, let's see, it's, we'll, we'll look up Eastern milk snake to look at this more. Milk snake. Uh, 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 uh. Um, so Eastern milk snakes, you can see, they don't actually have a rattle on their tail. Massasaugas rattle, milk snake, no rattle. So. What they, but they, they do a similar thing to make noise. If they actually will just hit their tail really fast against the ground, and it makes a sound that sounds a lot like rattlesnake. And there's quite a few kinds of snakes here that will do that, which is pretty cool because they're not venomous and they don't even have a rattle, but they can still sound like rattlesnake. I think that rattlesnake is the one that's the only kind of venomous snake in my state. Yeah, that's that's really cool. That's so. I think they're really cool. But in, in Canada, we only have three in the whole country. In Ontario, which is my province, we only have the one. It, it, it's because, so in Canada, like, it's too cold. Oh my goodness, I have to look at my thing again because nothing is working. My activity feed is still just like, I just don't want to work. Oh, nothing's working. That's cool. That's cool. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Was that, was that bits? I apologize. Thank you, Bunny, for the bits, I presume. Also, sorry for closing the thing. I minimized it to look, but nothing is working right now in terms of my alerts on my end, so I don't know what's going on. Generally, I'm in Michigan. Yeah, so, oh god, I don't know. I don't know U.S. states. I'm gonna guess that Michigan is further north. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look at but reptiles, um, so reptiles are ectothermic, it's, which is the, the fancy scientific term for cold-blooded, um, which basically means they are whatever temperature is around them. They don't make their own heat like we do. And so at a certain point, they can't go any further north because it gets too cold for them. And they have to be able to hibernate, but they need a certain amount of warm weather to be able to live, basically. Yeah. So Michigan is, is quite... Um, yeah, so this is this is where I live in Ontario, and this is where Michigan is. So it totally makes sense that we have Massasaugus here, you have Massasaugus there. There you go. Actually, I'm gonna look at Massasauga Range. Massasauga Range. And the further south you get, I think the more reptile species you get. Like we only have one kind of lizard here, which is a dang shame. Only done. I'm off to watch the football. Enjoy the rest of your stream. Love as always. All the animals. Thank you so much again for the raid. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. So, Elias, thank you for coming. Uh. Okay, that's just Ontario. That's not or not. Yeah, that is Ontario. That's not helping. Eastern Western Desert Toe. This is Ontario. And they're found up in here. I don't know what this... What you mean by Eastern... Western Desert. I don't know. It's okay. Yes, yeah, so that's some pretty cool stuff about mimicry. And we also, if we... I think we, we did talk about the, the hognose a little bit. But hognoses... Um, they also they also mimic cobras because they'll flare out their neck and they hit really loud and they puff up like they're a cobra, which my snake does quite a bit. <laughs> um, but the other cool thing I'm actually we're gonna go find a video of this is so hog noses. This this fellow we have two kinds of hog noses here. We have western and eastern. Um, I have a western hog nose because you can't legally have easterns here because they're native. But they, so they do this big old show. They're like the drama queens of the snake world, which is, they'll mimic cobras. So they like re-erupt real big. They flatten out their neck. They hiss. They pretend they're really, really scary. And 
if that does not work, they move on to phase two of their show, which is Hogtoses Will Play Dead. And it's really cool to watch. It's it's really good. Let's see. I will just do this one. Um, but they'll like they flip over, they open their mouth, they stick their tongue out, they might even writhe around like they're dead, and they're like, Bleh. it's very good. It's very good. So you can see this one already, it's flattened out. Um it's doing the cobra thing, and this person's like clearly it's still it's still pissing it off. It's still being like, okay, that thing didn't work. I didn't I didn't get scared. Oh, he's still he's probably hissing right now. I don't have the sound on. But See, and then now he goes into, like, the, uh, da, da, I'm dying. Look at him. It's really good. <laughs> and they'll, like, poop on themselves and stuff, and they'll just, like, roll around in it, and they'll do, like, anything to just make you believe that they're very dead, or they're dying, or they're diseased. Look at it! <gasps> oh my god, I love it. I had, um, a baby. We had a baby hognoses at my work once, and... It did that in my hand. It was so good. Like, it, it it's committed. And if you, like, he'll probably do it. If you flip it over, it'll just flip right back. It's like, no, no, I'm dead. I'm definitely, for sure, 100% dead. <laughs> it's very good. It's really, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Um, yeah, it's, hognoses are wonderful. They're also, they're really funny because some... So some snakes are really good climbers, um, and you can usually tell snakes that are more rounded all the way around are generally not as good climbers. Um, and then snakes that are good climbers, they tend to be shaped kind of like a loaf of bread, which means they're round on top. And then at the bottom, like on their stomach, they kind of have these corners. Let me see if I can find like rat snake stomach, belly, I don't know, the underside. I don't know, I don't know what you want to say, but... Uh, it might be kind of hard to see here. You can kind of see it here. This is a mad rat, rat snake. But you can see here, they're they're flat on the bottom, and they kind of have these um, little, like, corners here. And they can use those to, like, it's very flexible. And they use that, like, little fingers to, like, wedge into um, bark and stuff like that so they can climb. Because there are lots of arboreal snakes, which means they live in the trees. Um, and this is this one specifically, actually, the black rat snake. So that's the kind we have in Canada. I believe they're the longest snake we have in Canada, and they get about, like, usually, like, two meters, which I think is six and a half feet, but they can get up to, like, two and a half meters, which is more like eight feet. Um, but the, the, the thing with snakes is length. It, it, it always sounds really scary when you talk about length, because you're like, oh my god, this is an eight foot long snake, but really they're, like, this wide. So they're not that big. I mean, they're big, but they're not that big. They're just really long. They're just worms. They're long. Don't know what to tell you um but this is the longest snake we have here in canada they're pretty cool um there's a whole thing about the names because i think the one we have here is technically called a gray rat snake even though they're usually black um we can measure social distance by a snake that's right you need to keep a whole rat snake between you because i think there's another species somewhere down south that's also called a black rat snake and it's just the whole thing I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But they're very cool. I... <laughs> they were annoying when I worked with them. They're really pretty. They're very cool. But they were sketchy in terms of biting. Those sketchy boys. Um, I was not a fan. Oh! I'm going to show you my, my favorite native snake. I don't know if I could pick a favorite snake if I had to. But I'm going to show you my favorite um, kind of snake. Here. This is my favorite kind of snake. These are fox snakes. Which, like, A, what a cool name. Rat snake, not as cool. They probably eat rats. Makes sense. Not as cool. Fox snake. And I'm pretty sure, I'm not really sure why they're called fox snakes. Um, it might be because, like, the guy who discovered them's name was fox. Or, like, because their head is red. like a, Or, like, orange like a fox is. Like, I, I don't know. But it's a cool name. And there was one at work who I loved to bits and pieces. Um, she was my favorite snake because she would... She was long enough and strong enough that you could just put her on your neck and she would just sit on you. Um, but she was also a really, really good handleable snake. And she always ate, but she never, like, struck at anyone. Angel. Absolute angel. Next time I'll redeem for Jasper the Hog. He's itty-bitty. He's a teeny small boy. Yeah. 
Poppy has retreated into her, her little house in her carrying case. Um, but one of the interesting things, so fox snakes are another, we talked about this a little bit before, they're another kind of snake that will do the rattle thing. So they'll pretend they're um, massasaugas. And you can see, again, comparatively, like they're kind of brown and they have like splotches. And again, kind of brown and has little splotches. There's a lot of snakes here that like to pretend they're the one dangerous snake we have. It goes that way. Um, yeah. God, my, uh, I'm so close. I have to lasso me. Next time I will redeem mom on stream. Oh my god. I'll have a wild mom. 500 more sand dollars and we'll be there. Oh god. That's like, I don't know, a couple hours. I guess I will be like one more stream and then we can have mom on stream. And then I'll have to come up with another thing to do after that. Spicy. Okay. I think I'm probably going to end it there. My throat is getting sore and I'm getting quite hungry. Um, yeah. So we'll end it on the fox snake, which is my favorite pal. And I uh, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you everybody who followed today and subbed today. And we're so close to another email slot. And we hit 100 followers. And I'm having a great time. And I hope you guys are having a great time. I'm going to switch back to this for one second while we talk. Um, any other little announcement things? Um... On Saturday, we're going to be watching Kiki's Delivery Service in my Discord, which is, there's a link below if you want to come join it. I regularly put pictures of animals in there also. <laughs> um, and if you haven't followed already, I would appreciate it if you would. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Oh, one other thing is, so usually for Mondays, if you've been here, you know that I have, for the past, like, couple, I've had, um, I usually come on with a guest and we talk about something specific and I usually have to do a bunch of prep work for that kind of thing and I'm exhausted and I'm a little bit burnt out right now so which is why this stream I was like you know I'm not gonna do the thing I usually do I'm just gonna wing it we're gonna see how it goes I'm gonna talk about reptiles I think it went pretty well but this Monday I probably will still stream but the the prep work has been really tiring me out so I'll probably just honestly do like a little self-care day stream and I'll just hang out and do whatever I feel like and we can talk about whatever comes up. I'm happy to talk about mental health stuff. I'm just not going to prep for it like I usually do because I'm tired and I need a break. So that's how it goes sometimes. So again, uh, thank you everybody who came and watched today. And I know he left, but thank you so much for the raid. Um, and I think, oh God. Oh god, it's a problem when you have multiple people on and you don't know who to raid. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> the stress. The stress of it all. Um, we will do a raid. We're gonna raid. Just give me a second. Um, but yeah, if you have any animal questions, you can always ask me. And we can either all know or we'll figure it out together. Because I know some things, for sure. You did say messenger. I did say that. That's, that's true. That's true. Okay, well, we'll raid messenger. I hate making decisions. It's very stressful. We'll go raid messenger. Um, but again, thank you everybody for coming. Have a wonderful day. I will be back on Monday with the mental health stream. I'll be back next Wednesday with another wildlife Wednesday. Don't know what we'll do then, but we will figure it out as we go. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Mm -hmm.